kickoff against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech as they look to become the first Southwest... ...the exclusive Southwest Conference, Texas Tech accepted an invitation to the... Th ...in Dallas, Texas. The USC Trojans are here to meet the Texas Tech Red Raiders in the Cotton Bowl and to observe the passing of a long-standing college football tradition. Texas Tech, the 55th and last official Southwest Conference host team for the Cotton Bowl. More than 62,000 on hand in the stadium for the 59th renewal of this game. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley, along with Todd Christensen. Todd on the field. Strategically, this is seen as a battle between USC's great passing attack and the Red Raiders' Blitz Brothers' aggressive defense. Well, Rob Johnson may not have put up the numbers that he did in 1993, but clearly he is an outstanding pro prospect. In fact, he set an interesting record this year, 23 consecutive completions, and that really bespeaks rhythm. It's going to be the job of Texas Tech today, as you mentioned, spearheaded by their Blitz Brothers defense and Zach Thomas, their leading tackler, to get in the face of Rob Johnson. They may not necessarily have to sack him, but they have to get him out of his continuity, out of his rhythm, and affect adversely the pass offense of USC. Todd and I will be here in the booth on the field. The man who was defensive player of the game in the Cotton Bowl here only 17 years ago. How does it feel to be back, Bob Golick? Well, it was okay at this time. It was 17 years ago, but back in 78, 79, I was here with Notre Dame. We beat the University of Texas for the national championship one year. And one of Joe Montana's greatest comebacks was against the University of Houston here in 1979's Ice Bowl. But the one thing that they've got this year that we didn't have back then is tortillas. Now you can see who they're from, Texas Tech, with a little message on the other side. Speed USC. Now there's a tradition behind this. We're going to find out what it is, but until then, I'm just going to get something to eat. Thank you, guys. Hey, hey, hey! Golick being flooded by Texas Tech tortillas. And coaching the Red Raiders today, the noted tortilla eater, West Texan Spike Dykes, bowl record one and two, but he's had his team in bowls for two consecutive years, and he's the only Southwest Conference coach who can make that play. take the field as we mentioned the last of the 55 consecutive southwest conference host teams here in the cotton bowl next year the bowl coalition will govern selection here john robinson in his second tenure as usc head coach you can see that as a college coach his record in bowls is a good one five wins one loss We've got spectacular football weather in Dallas today. 52 degrees right now, partly cloudy, humidity 81%, but we are seen as having zero chance of rain. The wind is light out of the northeast. Both marching bands on hand, and therefore all the requisite pageantry for a major New Year's Day, or in this case, January 2 bowl game. Bowl entering into a new incarnation beginning next year when the Bowl Coalition governs selection and the following year when the Southwest Conference will officially dissolve. Now, Jim, at the top of the show, we mentioned that Rob Johnson did not have the numbers that he did last year. We should also mention that a lot of that was due to an ankle injury and, of course, the loss of first-round selection Johnny Morton with the Detroit Lions. And so he has had to make some adjustments this year, but clearly he is going to be one of the top draft picks in terms of quarterbacks in the 95 draft. Trojans will get the football first as off the opening coin toss John Robinson's team will receive on the left of your screen and Texas Tech prepares to kick it away Red Raider fans overwhelmingly dominant in the stands here only a relatively small contingent of USC fans have made the trek from Los Angeles for the game and of course as we mentioned at the top, Texas Tech followers have waited 56 years for their team to earn a shot in the Cotton Bowl. You know, when you talk to the people around Lubbock who are here and in our hotel, Jim, it was clear that they really didn't care. It didn't matter that it had been a long time. They're just happy to be there. 76-year-old lady in an elevator remarked, I've been waiting all my life for this. So despite the 6-5 and five record and despite the naysayers who are saying things like, big deal, why are you people here? They're thrilled. Number 98, who will kick it away. No, that 
Michael Davis, 16, with the kickoff. And it's Ken Grace who takes it for the Trojans. Across the 20 to about the 25-yard line, Southern Cal will begin its offensive thrust from there. The offensive line for USC, huge and spearheaded by consensus All-America tackle Tony Boselli, who goes 300-plus, listed at 6 feet 8 inches tall, and has had a terrific year. And the man who has replaced the departed Johnny Morton as the key receiving threat is Keyshawn Johnson, now called by his teammates and coaches the great Keyshawn Johnson. He averages nearly 20 yards a catch. On first down, the give is to starting tailback Sean Walters. And Walters, 894 rushing yards on the year, is across the 30 to the 33-yard line for a gain of about eight. Texas Tech Raider, Red Raider front seven, and the key man is the middle linebacker, Zach Thomas, number 35, as Todd told you, leading tackler in the Southwest Conference. Damon Wickware is another all-conference selection at defensive tackle. And in the secondary, two all-conference players, Marcus Coleman at the position they call Raider, we call it strong safety, and the free safety, Bart Thomas, also an all-conference player. Walters on second down has first down yardage across the 35 to about the 38-yard line before outside linebacker Robert Johnson makes the stop for Texas Tech. Well, Zach Thomas is the key to stopping the running attack of, of USC. Walter cuts inside, cuts to the out, breaks the tackle, and Thomas at the end is able to trip him up. One of the things that's going to have to happen is not just Zach Thomas, but the front three of the Red Raiders are going to have to deal with the big poundage of the offensive line of USC. Southern Cal starting off on the ground, earning a first down behind Walters. Ball's at the 37-yard line. This time, Walters is going to be met at the line of scrimmage by number 12, the Raider, Marcus Coleman. Lines up at different spots along the defense. Rob Johnson must find him before every play. Well, Marcus Coleman's a bit of a tweener. He's somebody that has linebacker size and strength but defensive back speed. You see him at the just to the right of your screen, come up and just take on Walters. And really, that's a pretty big deal there because Walters at 225, 230 is not what you'd call a scat back. Nice play by Coleman. Three carries for 12 yards for Sean Walters so far. We expect to see four different tailbacks as the day progresses for Southern Cal. Rob Johnson looking to throw for the first time. Screen, Walters, dropped after a couple yards game. Chris Forey wasn't fooled at defensive tackle. Well, it shows the quickness of the Red Raider defense that they come with the blitz and still are able to get in the way of the screen. That's basically what the screen is designed to do is take advantage of the blitz. They came with six people still quick enough to get out, and you can see here the ball hits the ground, scoops. A uh, nice scoop there by Walters, but it was too late. Good call by the official. So the incompletion occasions third down, 10 yards to go. Football at the 37. They must get it beyond the 47 to pick up the first down. Placing Walters at tailback, and he's got first down yardage out to the 48 before Johnson runs him out of bounds. From well, the bottom of your screen, he basically runs a loop route. Number 51 is probably the one who's responsible in coverage, and there's nobody there. The linebackers are occupied by the tight ends, and it's very surprised that a little dump pass like that to Green gets the first down, but it did. Keyshawn Johnson is 6'4". The two starting corners for Texas Tech, Sean Hurd and Cat Adams, both go 5 feet 8 inches tall, and Keyshawn Johnson in particular has been salivating at 
the thought of going against those small corners for Texas Tech. Well, once again, the big issue here is going to be pass rush. If Johnson gets the kind of time that he did that last time, then uh, it doesn't matter if the guys are 6'8". Take a look at the differential in size between the Texas Tech defensive line and the USC offense. We're looking at 35 pounds, basically, in terms of weight. The height might not be that consequential, but as witnessed by the Orange Bowl last night, hitting the fourth quarter and those big bodies keep wearing on you, it can take its toll, Jim. First possession of the game for the Trojans, 12 and a half minutes in the first quarter. Johnson looking deep in the end zone for Herbie, and Herbie unable to make the play over Sean Hurd. Exactly what you talked about, Jim. You mentioned earlier trying to take advantage of the height mismatch. Johnson really threw it was basically a jump ball. You see a lot of the NFL. You see a lot of that in the NFL now. And of course, Johnson trying to take advantage, throwing to the taller Herbie, but give her credit. Matching him stride for stride at the apex of his jump, brings the ball down. Great play by her. Second down, ten yards to go. to the 20-yard line. It'll be another Southern California first down. But just as we talk about the size of the offensive lineman, look at the domination inside. Look at the gap. Tony Baselli creates a big gap for Green to cut through, and he breaks the tackle, runs over a few more. You know, it's been over the last couple of years, Jim, SC has not been the tailback you that everybody is used to, but they're certainly asserting themselves here in the rushing game early. A good look at Baselli. Consensus All-America for the Trojans. On first down, Johnson throws down the middle and it's batted down. Number 91, Damon Wickware with a hand on the football. Of course, so many cases when you get the passes batted down, it's because you don't get the good pass rush. He was there right at the line of scrimmage. Never did make much in the way of penetration. Take a look in the middle. You can see there's really nobody in his face. Johnson will side on this ball just a little bit, and as you mentioned, Wickware able to get a little piece of it. Wickware, the one-time safety man who has grown into an all-conference defensive tackle. Second down 10 for the Trojans. Leonard Green, still in the football game, a tailback. Jabbar Thomas, number 51, has the stop of Green after a gain of about three to the 18-yard line. Well, Jabari Thomas just beats the block of the tight end, in this case, getting down the line. He's a little bit undersized for a defensive end, but he certainly is quick. Came off the block and made the stuff right in the hole. They mark it at the 19. Third down, eight yards to go. First possession of the game for Southern Cal. of the game from its 12-yard line. 11 minutes, 5 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The first Trojan scoring threat blunted by the lost fumble off the hands of Keyshawn Johnson. Freshman quarterback, Sebi Lefkowitz, creating out of the pocket as a gain of 9 or 10. Eric Mahone, check it, Alec Mahone, starting at defensive end for the Trojans, makes the stop. Offensive line for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, relatively small. Ed Hendricks gets the start at left guard. Normal starter Casey Jones broke a foot in practice for this game. Backs and receivers and the key to the Texas Tech season was the emergence of Zebby Lethridge at quarterback, Byron Hansbard at running back. Both freshmen. 
Measurement shows inches short of the first down. It will be second down and less than a yard. Number 11, Tony Darden, competed with Lethbridge for the starting quarterback position until that situation was settled four games into the season. Darden then became a wide receiver and leads the Red Raiders in yards per catch more than 21. Offensive coordinator Dick Winder on the sideline. 90 games, eight years, half the time, 45 times in fact, his team has scored more than 30 points. On second and short, the give is to Alton Crane, and Crane breaks loose across the 35 to the 36 yard line before Micah Phillips makes the stop from his free safety position. Well, they're certainly using the momentum that they had from the turnover, back-to-back -back great plays, a little misdirection, what they used to refer to as the cross buck, and Crane cuts to the outside, and clearly early in this drive, Texas Tech has caught USC on its heels. Crane, the senior who started through most of the year before Byron Hansbard took over that role in the last game against TCU. Well, number 10, Eric Heron just frankly doesn't get blocked. He's just able to beat the outside. Tackle comes in, has to make a choice between two. He takes the inside guy, which he should, and Heron's able to pick up the garbage. Eric Heron, a former Marine who served six months in Saudi Arabia during the Gulf War. So he's seen even bigger moments than the Cotton Bowl. down the stretch for the Red Raiders is stopped by Jeff Kopp after a gain of about five. USC Trojans front seven. Alec Mahone moving up the starter ahead of Willie Lowry today. Eric Heron gets the start ahead of Don Cunnigan at the linebacker position. Outside linebacker Errol Small is the key to the pass rush. In the secondary, Dallas native Micah Phillips gets the start at free safety ahead of Mario Bradley today. And John Herpin, senior corner, leads the Trojans with five on the year that tied for the lead in the Pac-10. Third down, 15 for Zebby Lethbridge and company. Lethbridge with an open receiver down the middle. Cannot hit number 40, the fullback, Todd Walker. And that will bring a punting situation for the Red Raiders. Walker lined up as the tight end in this set. Watch here as he cuts down the middle. This is a matter of touch, and clearly this is a play that they have not utilized that often. He had him wide open, but couldn't shorten the throw. Brad Cade on the punt, number 14. Brad Spinks, number 85, the deep snap it for Texas Tech. And the Red Raiders have spectacular punt coverage of 72 punts this year. Only three have been returned for more than six yards. Ken Grace, but then the second wave of coverage muffles him, and the Trojans will have the football for their second possession of the game, first and ten at their 33. It's scoreless when we come back. Texas State Fairgrounds, a full Cotton Bowl, 68,252 tickets sold. Rob Johnson and the Southern California Trojans begin their second possession of the game at their 33. Johnson looking deep to Keyshawn Johnson, to Texas Tech territory to the 32-yard line before Cat Adams made the stop. What's impressive about that, Jim, is he's rolling left, he throws back right. That's the sort of play that's going to impress professional scouts. Take a look at the misdirection here. Play action here. Now he's rolling to his left. He's going to throw back across his body to Keyshawn Johnson, who's running what's called a flag route, past the post to the other flag. And once again, Texas Tech in man for man. And that's the very thing that you mentioned at the outset, Jim. Keyshawn Johnson wanted to take advantage of it. 35-yard gain to Keyshawn Johnson, who averages nearly 20 yards per catch. And has had 100 yards or more receiving in each of the past seven games. On first down, Sean Walters with the football. And a flag is down as Walters, the sophomore from nearby Arlington, Texas, has a gain of about five. Southeastern Conference officiating crew today is headed by referee Al Ford. Holding during the run by the offense, 10 yards from the flag, still first down. Take a look in here and take a look at where you get a chance to see the hold. 
Tony Baselli comes down. You see the hands right on top of the defensive lineman, right at the throat, and that's what the official saw. Two points takedown. Probably not an NFL hold, though. Exactly. You're, no, you're probably right. <laughs> NFL scouts say, plus, no penalty, looked good. <laughs> but here at 10-yard mark-off, so it is first and 20. From beyond the 40, and Sean Walters again with the football is blasted to the turf. Jabbar Thomas was there, as was number 86, Tony Daniels. Kahneman a bit of a stunt in the middle. Take a look at Texas Tech. They, they stunt. Jabbar Thomas comes back to the inside. Guard fails to pick him up. Big play. Daniels, reserve defensive end, the sophomore out of Odessa, is a 245-pound, 6-foot-10-inch high jumper, Todd. What? 245. What? Some hops. That's getting up for 245. Second down, an extremely long. Johnson throws to a wide open end. Herbie. And Herbie has first down yardage inside the 15 to about the 12-yard line before Zach Thomas finally makes the stop. The whole time that we've been talking about man for man coverage, there's a miscommunication. The quarterback lets Herbie go. And when you see the linebacker in a chase position at the wide receiver, that means bad coverage. That means that somebody broke it up. So it's a 34-yard gain for Rob Johnson's passing numbers. He's now over 100 yards in the game. Has passed Rodney Pete to become the all-time career leader. Sean Walters on the ground. Touchdown. No flags. Robinson says that looked good. Sean Walters is 11th touchdown of the year. Cole Ford comes on the kick out of Ryan Lindemann's hold. Regular center Jeremy Hogue does the snapping on this extra point try. And he sneaks it through. Inside the left, left, right. So with six minutes, 51 seconds to go in the first quarter of the 59th annual Cotton Bowl game. University of Southern California Trojans have jumped on top of Texas Tech, 7 0 on Sean Walters' touchdown run. On his homecoming day, Cole Ford keeps it deep to the goal line. For number six, Stacey Mitchell has the football, and Mitchell will be short of the 20 as he's wrapped up in Trojan jersey. Football comes loose. with his own man, but in this case, give credit to the strip to Jesse Davis, reserve quarterback, who came and took the ball away and Carruthers with the recovery. That's the inside the 20, up 7-0. Trojans will start at the 19-yard line. Spike Dykes looking for flex on the Texas Tech sideline. Johnson looks in the end zone. Sean Banks unable to stay with Barnum as he circled from the fullback slot. Well, it's a simple, it's called the swing route or out and up, depending upon your terminology. And you got to be happy for Barnum because the fullback, of course, in the USC offense doesn't get to touch the ball that often, Jim. Runs a nice route, and Johnson put it right on the money. Ford attempting to add the extra point. Now, Lenderman's hold. Kick is good. With 6.39 still to go in the first quarter, have their second touchdown. Johnson's first touchdown pass of the day is a beauty. 19 yards to Terry Bonham. Sunday afternoon. Within 20 football seconds, Stacy Mitchell waits. 
near the right sideline to receive the kickoff from Cole Ford of USC. Moments ago, Mitchell's fumble on a kickoff return set up a 19-yard touchdown pass from Rob Johnson to Terry Barnum. A one-play, 12-second drive to stretch the FC lead to 14 nothing. And it's Mitchell again, this time from the two-yard line. He tries the middle of the field and is belted down at the 16-yard line. That was Carruthers again in on the hit along with Laval Woods. Carruthers back-to-back -back big plays. Not only makes the big hit, but with the recovery. And then, of course, just to the right of your screen, you'll see Johnson get the ball right in the hands of Barnum. 14 points in 12 seconds. Lightning strikes. Rob Johnson, 6 of 9, 125 yards in a TD. Zebby Leftridge tries to start the Texas Tech offense as they begin their second possession. And number five, Brian Williams, is there to crack Byron Hansbard to the turf. For no gain, it'll be second down 10. Brian Williams, a Dallas, Texas native, who's had 79 tackles this year, 10 of them for losses. You can see that he's the number two tackler on the USC defense. The top tackler on the defensive unit is number 35 inside linebacker Jeff Cobb. to the turf by Israel Ipiani. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Five yard penalty, still second down. Take a look right here. Number 92. In fact, you can actually see, hear them uh, screaming it. Matt Kennelly is the one who lines up in the neutral zone. Second and six from the 19 yard line. Leftridge's throw. In and out of the hands of the receiver. John Herpin has an open field to the end zone. for the Trojans, Carruthers. Tonight, a terrific night of television kicks off with The Fresh Prince, followed by the all-new return of the mother of all comedies, Mommies. Then see how it all started for the biggest new hit of the season, ER, the movie. It's all tonight, starting at 8, 7 central here on NBC. Fresh Prince, Mommies, ER. Texas Tech begins again. strong safety Sammy Knight. Changes the play to the flat route. Minimal gain though. SC in their zone coverage. Right on top of it. It's a pickup of about three to the 15 yard line. Make it second down seven from there. Texas 
set, just trying to get its collective feet on the ground, having been stormed for 21 points in the first quarter. Leverage, second down, overthrows, looking for number 82, Jason Lavender. Lavender is a 17-foot, 6-inch pole vaulter, transferred from the University of Kansas, and he would have needed the fiberglass pole to get to that football. 17-6. <laughs> Good. You like it, huh? No, no, I do. Being being a track guy, that's impressive. It's the second track fact of the day, too. And there aren't that many. How many football players with pole ball? Not many. Bob Mathias, maybe, but he was a decathlete. Debbie Lethridge, one of four in the air for three yards. It's third down and seven as Lethridge elects to scramble and is dumped by Matt Kennelly. Kennelly, the sophomore defensive tackle from Laguna Hills with a three-point mark for Lethridge on this play. Well, Kennelly wasn't fooled at all by the quarterback draw. Lethridge needed to take another step to fool them. Now, there's only two steps right there. You know that he's not going for it, and as a result, Kennelly is all over it. So Brad Cade, the junior out of Wolfworth, Texas, comes on for his second punt of the game. Cade is in his end zone. Waiting deep for SC is Ken Grace. Short punt. Grace takes it at the 46 a return of about two yards to the 44. And now the Trojans, with the 21-0 lead, will begin with excellent field position. And we go to Bob Golick on the sideline. Okay, and what would a bowl game be without meeting some of the proud parents? I'm here with Bob and Debbie Johnson, proud parents of Rob Johnson. How are you guys doing? Real good, Bob. Thank you very much. Now, like I said, uh, you guys obviously would love to be spending some time with the Rose Bowl, Rose bowl but at least it's a little vacation for you guys. Oh, it's been a great time. We've really had a great time. And yeah, he's had a great year. His son's had a great career, obviously a good game here, but uh, the pros coming up. A little sad to see him leaving home, huh? Yeah, a little sad, but we'll follow him even in the pros. We'll have a good time with it. All right, well, good luck to you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. Back on the field, Sean Walters breaks a tackle behind the line of scrimmage and winds up getting a first down near the 32-yard line. Byron Wright finally making the stop for Texas Tech. They'll mark it at the 33. It was a pickup of 11. And another Trojan first down. Walters now six carries for 32 yards in the game. This is Walters again. Touchdown if he can stand up. He's dropped at the three-yard line by Sean Hurd. Again, the offensive line for USC is dominant. Take a look at the right side, just blowing people off the ball. Once again, cuts in and out. The run support is not there. Great block outside there, wide out. Coming across, making the tackle just before he can get in the end zone. USC just totally dominant. 30-yard carry for Walters, who now has seven carries for 62 yards. He goes to the sideline. And number 24, Delon Washington, comes on field and tail back for Southern Cal. And Rob Johnson takes a look at the Red Raider defense and calls a timeout. So Dallas, Texas freshman Delon Washington makes his first appearance on the field for the Trojans. Terrific story, Todd Christensen. He had over 100 yards in the first game of the season as you watch Johnson talking to John Robinson on the sideline. And here are some of the numbers on Rob Johnson. We'll get back to the Delon Washington story in a moment. Well, one of the records that I had mentioned early on with regards to his 23 straight completions last year, of course, he threw for over 3,500 yards. The thing that impressed me when we looked at his statistics early Earlier, his two to one touchdown to interception ratio nation's number two quarterback by two NFL scouting services I wonder if that means that he who is he behind Jim McNair probably John Walsh or John Walsh of BYU yeah he said that he had watched Walsh's Walsh's bowl performance for BYU with considerable interest as a matter of fact well it's interesting to, well not simply because of the fact that he wants to know about him but the, of course the draft position could mean, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe millions, depending upon somebody's vantage point. Big time. And opinions on Rob Johnson seem to vary wildly, perhaps because the ankle injury prohibited him from having the kind of lights-out senior season he might have hoped to have. First and goal for the Trojans after the 30-yard run by Sean Walters. Delon Washington's first carry of the game, and Washington 
Jackson is stopped short of the goal line. As we mentioned, the freshman out of Kimball High School here in Dallas opened with a 100-yard-plus effort against Washington. Then after the second game of the season, he was sidelined. As questions were raised about his ineligibility, there were charges that he had not taken his own SAT test. It took two months for the Trojans to satisfy themselves that Washington was in the clear on that score. He was back in uniform for the Notre Dame game, did not play that day, but is expected to see considerable playing time and get some football action today. Now he goes back to the sideline. Sean Walters replaces him, and his flag is down as Walters goes into the end zone. Two flags are down, and I think they're going to get the USC offensive line for another takedown. comes off the ball where are the hands yep right there he has a piece of the jersey and that's what the official sees and once again Jim Lampley I would concur with you in the NFL that's legit you knew what I was thinking right <laughs> definitely not a hold at the next level but here it becomes second down goal to go from the 12 yard line Johnson looks in the end zone and overthrows intended for Ken Grace Sean Hurd there on the coverage for the Red Raiders Story gets some pressure on. He gets some pressure on. Watch the watch the to the right of your screen. He gets past Brimer and gets right in the face of Johnson. This is of course at the outset something that we mentioned that they needed to do. Take a look at the arm under a little bit of a swim move past Brimer. Snaps that head back a little bit. Brimer saying, "Get off him. I'll take care of it." Plays over. Or he says, "I can get up by myself." Johnson, touchdown to Keyshawn Johnson. Oh, what a catch by Keyshawn. First time in the 59-year history of the game that a team has scored 28 points in one quarter at the Cotton Bowl. Take a look at the feet of Keyshawn Johnson. As you mentioned, great catch. Only has to have one in bounds, and he drags it in. Something that's very popular now is throwing behind the defensive back, not leading the receiver. And the deep comeback route by Johnson certainly paid dividends there. Cole Ford in danger of getting leg weary here in the first quarter. Spike Dykes says this is a bad movie. And Keyshawn Johnson, always demonstrative, celebrates on the sideline. Great protection. Once again, extending himself with the catch. Left foot, even the left foot was in. Left foot was in twice. Another very accurate throw by Johnson. So Sean Walters has two touchdowns from his tailback position. Johnson has a touchdown pass to Terry Barnum and the touchdown pass to Keyshawn Johnson. Johnson has three catches for 54 yards in a TD, and as we mentioned, SC is the first team in the 59-year history of the game to score 28 points in a quarter, and State scored 24 points in a quarter. A long time ago, 1974, two decades ago. Trojans have two minutes, 21 seconds remaining in which to try to add to this mark. Traveler on the sideline. As Cole Ford kicks it away for Southern Cal. And this time it'll be Dane Johnson. And Johnson judiciously decides to put the knee down. And Texas Tech will get the football at the 20. An improvement on each of the three preceding field position situations following SC kickoff. We heard the mock cheer from the crowd. A 22-yard return in that case. Zebby Lethridge, 6-foot, 188-pound freshman out of Lubbock, will now attempt to begin digging the Texas Tech Red Raiders out of a fairly substantial hole. 
in the air. One of four for three yards to this point. Southeastern Conference officials asking for the sideline to be cleared over on the SC side. the 20-yard line. Hansbard comes off the field. Alton Crane comes in. Number three at the tailback position. Texas Tech with 17 total yards to this point in the first quarter. Lethbridge's throw is too far for Tony Darton. And it will bring up a punting situation. Southern Cal has 215 yards in the quarter. If they maintain that pace, they will close in on 900 yards for the game. Scary. It's gotten scary early here. Brad Cade awaits the snap from Brad Spinks, standing inside his 10-yard line. And Grace, once again, deep for SC. Relatively short kick by Cade is taken at the 42-yard line. Grace making the fair catch there. A flag is down on the field. We've got defensive holding of post-possession, so they'll mark it off now starting at the 31. Scores of other bowl games going by at the bottom of your screen. Our congratulations, and I'm sure those of John Robinson as well, too. Holding on the Tom return Osborne. team, 10 yards from the end of the kick. First down. Tom Osborne and Nebraska Cornhuskers deserving of congratulations this morning for the comeback victory over Miami last night, which would appear to have assured the Cornhuskers of a wire service national championship. Well, you, you and I have discussed this before, and my opinion is, is I like the beauty contest format. I just do because I think it's good for college sports. I don't know what the consuming passion is that we have to have in number one. This is one of those cases where it's controversial, so be it. First and ten from the 31-yard line. Washington on the field has the football and a substantial gain out near the 40 before Mark Thomas, number 23, makes the stop for Texas Tech. Good opportunity for Delon Washington, as you documented early in the game, he, early in the season rather, he started like a house of fire, and now basically this is his opportunity to show his wares after, I believe it's what, nine games, Jim, that he's actually played in a game, not just practice. Second down two. Washington again. Stepping inside. And stops short of the first down as Tony Daniels, number 86, is there along with Zach Thomas, number 35, for Texas Tech. Zach Thomas working overtime here against the offensive line and backs of USC. Does a great job filtering right into the middle and making the play. down two now for SC. Clock running out in the first quarter. So it's third down two from the 39-yard line. Rob Johnson driving straight back. And it's complete over the middle to John Allred, the sophomore tight end out of Del Mar, Torrey Vines High School. Verona McKinley makes the stop from his cornerback position for Texas Tech. Trojans to midfield and just 
a tiny bit beyond. And that is the end of the first quarter. With the score in the 59th annual Cotton Bowl game. USC 28, Texas Tech nothing. Christensen at the Cotton Bowl where Southern Cal exploded for 28 first quarter points and the Trojans lead 28 zip over Texas Tech as the second period begins. Rob Johnson, pump fake, holds on to the football. Robert Johnson was there from his linebacker position for Texas Tech and it'll be a sack, a five-yard loss, and second and 15 for SC. Watch the top of your screen, here he comes. Tight end already in blocking on him, but he's able to escape. Persistent. Johnson steps up. Saxon. Robert Johnson, maybe the smallest major college outside linebacker in the country at 186 pounds and 5'11. Tries to make up for it by hitting hard. Second down 16 on the 45 yard line. Blitz. Johnson gets the football away. defensive tackle out of San Antonio there to make the stop for the Red Raiders. Watch you right of your screen. It's kind of a short screen to Washington, but it really never does get developed. And Jabbar Thomas was not fooled at all right in the face of Washington. Now, where was Corey Chandler? I'll have to check with my spotters on that because it was Robert Johnson, as you saw, along with Jabbar Thomas making the stop. Throws complete. The number 88, Herbie, and Herbie is all the way down to the 12 yard line before Martin Thomas knocks him out of bounds. Little miscommunication. Take a look here at the bottom of your screen. Number 25, this John Kerr just lets him go. And he's anticipating that he's getting some help from the strong safety Coleman, but it never materialized. A gain of 49 yards on the play. That'll push Rob Johnson now to close to 200 yards passing in the game. He had 149 in the first quarter. And number 25 with the football is Rodney Simmons. The fourth SC tailback to have appeared in the game is knocked down by Robert Johnson after a gain inside the 10 to about the seven yard line. Counter boot, here it comes. Take a look at Baselli on the pull, showing what he can do at six foot eight and 305 pounds, leading the way. Rodney Sermons, a freshman out of Diamond Bar, as I mentioned. The fourth SC tailback to have played in the game, joining Sean Walters, Leonard Green, and Delon Washington. Now, Sermons goes back to the sideline, and Washington is in at tailback as the Trojans prepare for second down from the seven-yard line. Johnson throws out of the back of the end zone. Flag down. He's going to call it intentional grounding. <laughs> Funny, Tony Baselli comes over trying to explain who was there in the vicinity. It's always a subjective call. Sympathy call? <laughs> that could be. Looks left, and he's going to scramble out. Now watch to the far right. He's just about to fall down, and clearly he's just letting it go. But there you can see there's nobody even close. I guess you could say DeLon Washington if he was 10 feet tall. Holding on offense. times, Jim, you see that, that exact same play, and, and they let it go. But clearly, there was nobody within the vicinity, as I mentioned, unless Washington was tall, so now Johnson will get another shot at it on the 19th. After the brief discussion with offensive coordinator Mike Riley on the sideline, they can make a first down without scoring at the one-yard line. So it's third and 18 from the 19-yard line. He's on Johnson to the five. And right, number 94, finally dragged him down. Now, it's interesting here now, Jim. They end up with fourth and about three and a half. Whether or not they'll go for it and kick the field goal. John Robinson trying to make that decision. He's not quite sure. Well, now, 
Now, what does the book say when you're up 28 nothing with 12:07 uh, to go in the first half on this side? Well, that, that's that's an interesting point. You kick the field goal, making it look like you're rubbing it in at 31, but then again, if you go for it, you're saying, well, we have no respect for your defense, so that's rubbing it in too. And it's kind of a can't-win situation for John Robinson in terms of coaching decor in that area. They'll take the modest option and go for three. Cole Ford's field goal try is wide to the right. So no blood as the Trojans squander this scoring opportunity. And it remains 28-0 Southern Cal with 11 minutes, 41 seconds to go before halftime. The first favorable event of the day for Texas Tech. Jay Curtis Sanford, the man who founded the Cotton Bowl six decades ago. On first down for Texas Tech, Byron Hansbard has a gain of a couple. It'll be second down eight from the 22-yard line. Texas Tech appearing here in Dallas in the Cotton Bowl for the first time ever as the official Southwest Conference host team. And for only the second time in the history of the university, they played here on January 2, 1939. 56 years ago to the day. That, of course, was the 1938 Texas Tech team. It arrived here with a record of 10 wins, no losses. Zebby Lefford's on second down. Tries to throw a screen pass, but reserve fullback Rod Hobbs, number 33, was on the ground and had no chance to catch the football. Our Bob Golick has located a couple of surviving members of the 1938 Texas Tech team. Let's go to Bob right now. Yes, we have the 1938 team, 1939 Cotton Bowl. We have Lonnie Primo McCurry and Frank Usick. Frank up there was the captain of the team. Now, uh, obviously, you guys are, uh, things aren't going so well right now, but you're still pretty enthusiastic. Not really, not get something to be enthusiastic about. <laughs> now, now, uh, now, Elmer Tarbach, who, who was a teammate of yours, just passed away. You got any uh, remembrances of him? Oh, he's in <laughs> he was the only one that made a success of him. Well, you guys are doing all right. That is, you guys enjoy the rest of the game. Sit down, relax. We'll let you have a good time. We'll send a hot dog over. Thank you. All right, thank you, Bob Golick. Those men, members of the 1938 Texas Tech Red Raider team, last one to play here. You saw the pass to Tony Darden. Darden was out of bounds. And that brings on another punting situation for Texas Tech. Deep to kick it away again is Brad Cade. I may be losing count here, but I think that's Cade's fifth part of the game. And Grace is hit as he tries to field it. Home the loose football up. belongs to the Red Raiders. Bart Thomas on the ball. Marcus Coleman was the man who hit the punt return. Specialist Ken Grace and Todd looks like this is all going to go for naught as far as Texas Tech is concerned. Yeah, Coleman got him just a little bit early. Tough when you're the punt sprinter. Sometimes you want to go for those colossal hits and sometimes the timing isn't quite right. Got him just a little bit early. Contact with a fair man, 15 yards. It was a fair catch, but he certainly caught him a little bit early. His arm's not up. Take a look. G gets him just before the ball does. Just a little. That was close. Pretty that close. Was close. Yeah. It really was close. Take a look at from this angle now. The ball. Woo. Oh, man. Might have been a great play. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> timing, timing is close, but uh, clearly at this point, it's not a Red Raider day. But the bad fortune for Texas Tech is that it's first down Southern Cal at the Red Raider 44 after the 15-yard markoff. Freshman Delon Washington with the football has a gain of a couple before Zach Thomas makes the stop for Texas Tech. Washington was heavily recruited by a lot of major schools. His older brother, Benny, wanted him to come to Southern Cal and inherit the great and long-standing tailback tradition there. When Benny died in a drive-by shooting this past January, Washington, upon learning of his brother's death, called Southern Cal recruiting coordinator Keith Burns on the phone immediately and said, I'm going to come to Troy. I want to fulfill my brother's dream. Second down, six yards to go with the football at the 40-yard line. Give it to Rodney Sermons, and Sermons has a gain of maybe a yard. Held on to the football, but Dane Johnson was there to make the stop for Texas Tech. 
just tries to cut back to the inside. He tries to cut off the inside foot right there, the right foot. You're always supposed to cut off the outside foot, and then going off the inside, he slips. Goes down at the 40. Cotton Bowl game being played on grass for the second consecutive year after 24 years of artificial surface in this stadium. Nice to see the natural stuff back. to the 29-yard line. A pickup of 11 and another Trojan first down before Verone McKinley made the stop. Jim, I'm 38 years of age, but I could run behind the hole. Look at the left side of the line here, just caving people down. He's supposed to go right, and all of a sudden, look at that absolute crevasse that's created by Baselli and Reimer for him to run through. Honest, at 38, I could run through that, Jim. The Grand Canyon. Football is just inside the 30. The men of Troy with over 300 yards total offense now in the football game. Texas Tech, when last I checked, had 17. And now we get a timeout on the field called by SC. Eight minutes, 52 seconds left to go before halftime. Second of three timeouts now used by the Trojans, so they'll have only one remaining, but they're fairly safe with a 28-0 Cotton Bowl lead. To watch the Fiesta Bowl after this one is over. Last chance, Todd, to see that great Colorado offense all together with Cordell Stewart and Michael Westbrook and Rashawn Salam and all the rest. On first down, SC from the 30. Delon Washington ducks inside. Right tackle. Zach Thomas drags him down after a gain of a couple. It'll be second down eight. Part of the problem of being such a small defensive end, in this case Robert Johnson, is that Tony Baselli pulls out and just absolutely creams him. You mentioned earlier, Jim, the fact that at 5'11", 186 pounds, Baselli, 6'8", 305, just absolutely wiped him out. This is a man that is going to be very rich. Left tackle in the NFL, absolutely a crucial position. Almost a glamour position now. Washington with the catch over the middle, belts it from behind. Biggest hit of the game is supplied by Damon Wickware, number 91. And he's short of a first down. It'll be third down for Southern Cal. The football at about the 23-yard line. They need to get it inside the 22, just about the 19 and a half for a first down. Damon Wickware comes off the pass rush. Washington thinks he's all alone. There's no way you can see him coming from his left. And pow, there he goes. Nice hit. 6'3", 279-pound senior defensive tackle out of first Texas, number 91, Wickware. On third down three for the Trojans, it's Robbie Sermons with the football, and Chris Ory reacts from his defensive tackle position to muffle that one, so the Red Raiders successfully stop a Southern Cal drive and force SC into the field goal mode. I'm really surprised, especially after Ford missed that easy chip shot, that they're not going for it here, especially where the offensive line's been playing, Jim. Lenderman holds. Jeremy Hogue, the center, is a Phi Beta Kappa and potential Rhodes Scholar candidate. This time, Cole Ford is true. Down the middle for the field goal that stretches SC's lead in the football game to 31-0. 39-yard kick for Cole Ford. And SC's got a 31-zip lead with seven minutes to go to halftime. With the Cotton Bowl, Jim Lampley and Todd Christensen. SC, 31-0 now, ahead of Texas Tech. 6.50 to go before halftime. Cole Ford, again to kick it off. And again, gets it into the end zone. Stacy Mitchell. Wisely puts a knee on the turf, and it's time for me now, Todd, to urge you to watch Law and Order Wednesday night. The trial of a powerful mobster takes a deadly turn when a juror is murdered. It's an exciting all-new Law and Order Wednesday at 10, 9 central here on NBC. Sam Waterston and company. Great actor. He is terrific, isn't he? Remember Capricorn 1? Remember that movie, Elliot Gould? Only you, Todd. No, 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 you saw it. Only, Only you. Saw. First down for the Red Raiders, Debbie Leffert gets away from the run. Now fires in 
incomplete down the sideline. Vaguely intended for Stacy Mitchell, and a flag goes down. Kind of a foolish play there. It really was. Lethridge hit the turf. Foolish play on the part of Darrell Russell. The play was completely over. 15-yard penalty for roughing the passer against the defense. First down. Really no excuse for it. Watch the ball's thrown. One, two. Has him right there. Now he's completely gone. Why throw him to the turf like that? Foolish. Keith Burns, new defensive coordinator for SC, watches on the sideline. Penalty Markoff gives Texas Tech the first down. And Hansbard gets it across the 40 before Byron or Brian Williams makes the tackle. Quickly, let's check in on our New York studio. Thanks, Tim and Tampa at the Hall of Fame game. It was Duke and Wisconsin, and this one is all over. Wisconsin putting it away with seven minutes left. Daryl Bevel finds fullback Jason Burns for the 11-yard touchdown, and Terrell Fletcher, a superb job running this afternoon. A Hall of Fame record, 241 yards rushing for two touchdowns. The final, 34 to 20. We'll have all the highlights and scores for you at the half. Let's send it back to Jim and Todd at the Cotton Bowl. And as we bring you back here, Byron Hanspard again with the football, Jeff Kopp and Sammy Knight on the stop for USC, short of first down yardage. It'll be third down for the Red Raiders. Hannah Storm in the studio all day long with Paul McGuire and feature reporter Marianne Grabavoy to keep us up to date on other games. And now a flag flies after the play has concluded. I think that Al Ford, the official, heard some words that he didn't want to hear. Some unsportsmanlike conduct on the part of the SC defense. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense, 15 yards, first down. There were certainly no late hits or anything. He's standing in the midst of the white shirts, and all of a sudden he throws the flag. And John Robinson wonders to himself, why do my guys talk trash when they're up 31 nothing? Right here he sees it. He hears something from number nine. You know what? He heard it from Daryl Russell. Daryl Russell is still moaning about the call that he had earlier. This time, Lethridge is sacked as number 55, Israel Olympia comes around the corner in a hurry. Now, wasn't there, wasn't there another Samoan that wore number 55 for the Trojans that was doing a little of this? This fellow's a Nigerian. Excuse me. It's all right. Still number 55. He reminds you a little bit of Junior Seau coming off the edge like that. Izzy Ebiani, 6'5", 250. As you see, he's from Lagos, Nigeria. He's a member of the Igbo tribe and speaks Igbo as his primary language. Ooh. his defensive end position for SC. I think you're right. I think Olajuwon's hometown is listed as Lagos, Nigeria. You know, I, I, and come to think of it, I think we're supposed to say Lagos, too. Lagos? Yeah, I think it is Lagos, Nigeria, not Lagos, Nigeria. We should probably have somebody check that for us just to be certain. Third down, 22 yards to go now for Lethridge and the Raiders. moves up the sideline into SC territory. Gets to about the 47 before Williams and Kopp run him out of bounds. But it'll be fourth down and still double digits for Texas Tech. And it is Lagos. We checked it. So it's Lagos, Nigeria, not Lagos, Nigeria for Izzy Epiani. Grant Cade on to kick it away again. on punt coverage last time when Marcus Coleman was called for roughing. This time, Cage kick sails into the end zone. Touchback. It'll be Trojan football at their 20. 4.09 remaining in the half. FC up 31-0 in the Cotton Bowl when we come back. Cotton Bowl live now. USC fans having a big day as you watch the Trojans take a 31-0 lead. And there's a rundown on what SC has been able to do with its six possessions in the first half. What's impressive about that is even the two that they goofed up missed field goal. And, of course, the fumble was inside the 15-yard line. Rob Johnson on first.
first down, complete to Keyshawn Johnson, and Keyshawn steps out of bounds at about the 34-yard line, 14-yard pickup, first down SC. Bob Golick stands by with one of the biggest names in the recent history of Texas Tech football. Bob? Right, Texas Tech quarterback from 1985 to 88, Billy Joe Tolliver. What's up, man? Oh, I'm just out here watching the Red Raiders trying to get a victory. Uh, Looks pretty rough right now, but I think our boys will fight back and get back in it. Oh, we wanted to talk to you when they had the ball or when they scored, but... <laughs> well, they're, they're working on that. Uh, maybe maybe when we stop them, that'll get it going. What's up down in Houston? Fisher going to stay in there? I hope so. I think Jeff's a good football coach. Uh, I'd like to see him name him, and uh, you know, that's coming from a guy who might not be there. So we'll... I was going to say, what's, what's your contract situation? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll am i be a free agent February 15th, and uh, you know we'll just see how it goes. I'd like to stay in Houston, but uh, you never can tell now. That'll be some big money if you can move around a little bit. Now, what what's the situation with the offense down there? You know, guys were running shoot for so long, and now obviously that there's a there's a changeover. The the owner doesn't like that anymore. Well, I think we're talking about doing what USC's doing. It seems to be working. <laughs> I think we we need to install that. But uh, we're going to get the tight end involved a little more and get a fullback. Whoa. Okay, well, well thank, Billy Joe, very much. Thank you very much for coming down. I'm going to let you go over there. Maybe you can do some coaching with the uh, with the guys over there. I know they're looking your way, looking me off. They're running you off. <laughs> okay, Billy Joe. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you very much. Billy Joe Tolliver, starting quarterback this past season, much of the way with the Houston Oilers. Jeff Fisher's team got a win in its last game, Todd. Yes, they ended up 2-14. and 14. I, I think that's a legitimate question as to what they are going to do offensively. I really think that one of the reasons that they struggled this year, everybody just put the blame on Warren Moon, but let's face it, to say we're going to, okay, now all of a sudden we're going to integrate the tight end into the offense, it's just, you don't do it. It's not that simple. And it must be noted that the victory came with the other quarterback, Bucky Richardson, at the helm. Rob Johnson comes a cropper for one of the few times today as he falls down at the 26-yard line. Jabbar Thomas was there to watch him fall. So Thomas will get credit for the sack. It'll be second down 18 from the 26. A couple of times we've had that, the slips. You know what a lot of that is. You see the tape on his feet. What happens a lot of times is you sometimes tape between the cleats, and that shortens them. I think in that case, maybe that cost him there, particularly on the heels. So that little ballet makes it interesting at second and 18. They give to Walters, and Walters, who has certainly been the hardest running of the SC tailbacks today, has a gain back to about the original line of scrimmage before Barton Thomas makes the stop for Texas Tech. Smooth sailing for John Robinson as he guns for his sixth bowl victory, his 83rd win overall as head coach of the SC Trojans. One of the highest winning percentages among active college football coaches. Third down eight after the 10-yard pickup by Walters. And Johnson going deep. Looking for number eight, Ken Grace. Grace was covered by Cat Adams and unable to make a play. And you hear the cheer of the crowd finally stopping the USC offense, man-for-man -man coverage. Just thrown a little bit too far. Grace had a step. Here comes Zach Thomas on the inside blitz. Didn't quite get there, but that might have pressured him to throw it just a little bit longer than he wanted. John Stonehouse, the SC punter on the field for the first time, averaged 44.1 yards per kick this season. This one's shorter than that. And perfect coverage. Crowd calling for an early hit flag and not getting it as Brian Kelly came up to catch the punt. Now that flag does go down. I don't think it was so much the early hit as much as he might have called a fair catch and nobody saw it. Or the man that hit him didn't see it. 36-yard punt. No yardage return. Al Ford. Five-yard violation against the kicking team with a receiver. Five-yard first down. He has to allow the gap for him to make the catch. Watch here to the right of your screen as he steps up and makes the catch, and watch how close the defender is right on top of him. Does not, allow, well, that's not even five yards. Shoot, that's not even a yard. Once again, as you mentioned earlier, in the NFL, that's a great play. Leftridge on first down. 
scrambling and firing wildly to the tech sideline. Brian Williams was the Trojan nearest the football, and Rod Hobbs, fullback, was the nearest Red Raider, but that ball had no chance of landing anywhere near inbound. Total yards, total dominance. The scoreboard reflects that. I would say telling a story not unlike that of the scoreboard. On second down, 10. Black flies. Lethbridge just passes. Picked off by Heron. Herpin, I should say, with his second interception of the game. Tony Darden. Flags down. Was the intended receiver. Illegal motion against the offense. Penalty declined. Declined, First yeah. down. Oh, Zebby. Tough day so far for the redshirt freshman from Lubbock. Well, this is going to be one of those days that uh, hopefully in a couple of years, remember, he is a redshirt freshman, and you got to figure that maybe in, uh, in fall of 95, 96, or 97, this is one of those days that you'll be able to look back and laugh at. But uh, right now, nothing humorous about it. And Herpin, the senior out of Laporte, Texas, has his second interception of the game, bringing Lethridge's statistics as Texas Tech quarterback to one for nine for three yards with two interceptions. SC up 31 nothing already. Flag down as Rob Johnson waits and throws almost a touchdown to Keyshawn Johnson in the end zone. Flag is down and the great protection was a byproduct, it appears, of holding. McWilliams, the tight end at the top of your screen, is the one who's going to have the hands all over Jabbar Thomas. Once again, strange that they would do that. They'd have the offensive tackle blocked down, leave him all alone on the defensive end, and as a result of that mismatch, you get the holding call. So now make it first down, 24 yards to go. Football is at the 30. they got to get it to the 6 for a first down. Rob Johnson throws down the middle, and it's complete to tight end Johnny McWilliams. Zach Thomas and Sean Banks make the stop as McWilliams gets it to about the 20. Call it a gain of nine to the 21, and it'll be second down 15. Clock running at about 150, Jim, and the Trojans don't have any timeouts left. That's right, Rob Johnson having used all three timeouts for strategy conferences with Coach John Robinson on second and 15, under pressure. Johnson pulls the football down and is dropped by DeBar Thomas. Jabbar Thomas has been busy today at the top of your screen. This time he beats the tackle, Dorito up and under he even bounces off of Walters great persistence on the part of Thomas give him a lot of credit down 31 nothing be easy to mail it in at this point but to Th Thomas is still coming so it's third down 19 now the football the 25 again they've got to get it to the six for first down Keyshawn Johnson out of the slot they go down the middle instead and it's complete for first down yardage to Johnny McWilliams, a flag is down, though, as McWilliams is hauled down inside the five by Cat Adams. Three of them down, Jim. They almost have seen the same thing. Defense lined up in the neutral zone. Got holding on the offense. The penalty's all set. Still third down. 
So they'll replay third down 19. Be sure to stay with us at halftime for the Prudential update. Hannah Storm, Paul McGuire with all the scores and highlights of today's other bowl games. Also a preview of the IBM OS2 Fiesta Bowl coming up immediately after our game. Marianne Grabovoy will have a visit with Heisman Trophy winner Rashan Salam, who leads the Colorado Buffaloes against Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. And we'll hear from both bands here. Catch part of the colorful Cotton Bowl halftime show. All of that coming your way. Third down, 19. Rob Johnson throws wide of a receiver. Under pressure and... Keyshawn Johnson stood and simply watched that one fall lamely to the turf. You know, Jim, getting back to Rashawn Salam, I'd read an article that as a result of all the banquets and uh, awards that he had presented, that he had gained some 14 pounds. And they were wondering as to whether what kind of shape he was in. And so it'll be interesting to see how well he runs today with that extra poundage. Paul Ford already with one field goal to his credit in the game. That one was from 39. This will be a 42-yard try. He's got plenty of length, but he's often inaccurate on these. This one, however, he gets between the uprights, and that stretches the SC lead to 34-0 with 17 seconds remaining in the half. Forty-two yard are always good for a, for a kicker psyche. You mentioned he has plenty of leg. Finds it just inside the right upright. Feeling a little better about himself after missing that early chip shot. Multi-sport athlete, skier, paraglider, team daredevil. Have you ever done that paraglide? No, I have not. Oh, I, I, I will though. Were you really? Yeah, I will in the future because, uh, as you know. I'm getting ready to come up and spend some time in your neck of the woods in Utah, and it's very popular up there. Most points ever scored in the first half of a Cotton Bowl. SC's 34. Previous record, BC with 39 or 31 points back in 1985. So now preparing to kick off from the 35 is Cole Ford. <laughs> Johnson and Stacy Mitchell deep to receive for Texas Tech. Texas Tech crowd still making some noise here. Ford again kicks it deep into the end zone and again Stacy Mitchell. He elects to down it and the Red Raiders will start from their 20 yard line. See if Lethridge is coming onto the field at quarterback again. He has had a miserable outing so far, but here he comes one more time. Well, why not? It's a learning experience. Spike Dykes electing to stick with his redshirt freshman quarterback who won the battle for the job early in the season against Tony Darden, who's since been moved to wide receiver. And Lethridge completes one to Darden, and Darden goes out of bounds across the 30 for a first down. Sammy crowd responds with enormous enthusiasm. <laughs> Best play of the day offensively for Texas Tech. <laughs> On second down, another Lethridge completion to Darden. This one for relatively short yardage and Texas Tech elects to stop the clock with six seconds still remaining in the half. Anna Storm and Paul McGuire standing by in New York. Both bands, the Texas Tech going band and the Spirit of Troy, USC Trojan marching band, preparing to perform here along with the Kilgore Rangerettes. Marianne Grabovoy's feature on Heisman Trophy winner Rashan Salam. Maybe we'll find out exactly how much weight he's gained. The banquet circuit has bedeviled Heisman winners and Consensus All-Americas in bowl games for years, Todd. <laughs> yeah, let's go everyone in Colorado. <laughs> right on, let's see. What's up, Bob? Well, they can afford the luxury now. Look at that smile on his face. Yeah, you can be happy when you're up 34 zip. Notice that he keeps close to Baselli. Yeah, I would too. Personal protector. I remember when Vinny Testaverde, after several weeks of banquets and trips, 
and missing practices with his receivers couldn't connect in the Fiesta Bowl. Lethridge, Darden, third straight completion. Darden goes out of bounds again. Clock shows no time, so that is the end of that particular Texas Tech offensive effort. Their best of the first half. And what was for the Red Raiders and their fans a miserable anticlimax after 56 years of waiting to get to Dallas leaves SC with a 34-0 halftime lead. And at this difficult moment, our Bob Golick prepares to try to talk to Texas Tech head coach Spike Dykes. And Spike, gracious as always, is ready to do it. Bob? Good. Coach Dykes, uh, obviously the first half that you did not expect. Uh, correctable problems you, you foresee you can do in the halftime? Well, we paint ourselves in the corner so many times, you know, we've not had a chance to really play football yet. We've always had our back to the wall. We just got to go in and re you know, regroup and come back out and play like crazy. It really seemed like you started to make a few things happen there at the end of the, the first half. So that, that's a, a good positive move. Well, it is, Bob. We just, we're a long way behind. We got to have some big plays. We got to make some big plays on defense. And we got to start moving on offense. All right, Coach. Good luck this half. Thank you, back up to you, Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Bob Golick. And now on the field, the Spirit of Troy, USC Trojan marching band, under the direction of band director Arthur C. Bartner celebrating his 25th year in charge of this group. 270 plus members here in the Cotton Bowl today. You try not to give them any speeches about, you know, look out, you know. Right. Is, that, is that almost this play of that seed in your head? So we've just got to continue trying to do the things we want to do. And, and we hopefully we get a chance to play some younger kids, you know. We've got a lot of young kids right. playing, but that's what we're trying to do. Okay, thanks, Coach. All right, back to you, Jim. All right, thank you very much, Bob Golick. Todd Christensen, massive, improbable, illogical comebacks are by no means unheard of in bowl games. You seen a chance for one here? No. <laughs> I think that the domination has just been uh, completely uh, on the part of SC in a lot of cases you see here. This really was the beginning of the end. After an SC touchdown, the fumble on the kickoff recovered by Crothers in the very next play on the out and up, he gets the ball out to Barnum for the touchdown. And from there, it's basically downhill for the Red Raiders. They might get a gratuitous score. They might do some things offensively that they didn't do in the first half. It's asking an awful lot to get five touchdowns. Yeah, that made it 14-0. It was soon 28-0, and then on to 34-0 where it stands right now. You look at the halftime stats reflecting USC's total domination, 334 yards of total offense for the Trojans. And now the already leg-weary Cole Ford kicks the ball almost out of the end zone. And Texas Tech will begin its first offensive possession of the second half at the 20-yard line. Zebby Lethridge struggled mightily at quarterback in the first half for Texas Tech. You see the numbers on Lethridge, and he completed his last three passes of the half, all of them to Tony Darden. So to that point, he had been one for, well, one for 10 before it became four for 13. himself at risk a little bit. Number five dragging him down. Outside linebacker Brian Williams out of Dallas. Well, on the passing downs, Brian Williams had basically been playing as a spy knowing that Lethridge has the great running ability. Remember, just at the end of the first half, it was Williams who pushed him out of bounds to end it. He's basically put in the position to say, look, we don't want this guy to beat us with a big run, and Williams has done an outstanding job of that thus far. Alton Crane, the senior from Waco, comes out of the game at tailback. Byron Hansbard, the freshman from DeSoto, Texas, comes on. Lethridge looking for his guard in the flat. Gets the football to him, and Sammy Knight runs him out of bounds after a gain of about five yards. Well, this really is the sort of thing that Lethridge needs to do here, and that is complete a couple of short passes and get a little confidence in his arm. You know, he struggled mightily in the first half with any degree of accuracy. So if he can get a few things underneath, you know, as we say, it's a learning process in this game. Third down five now with the football at the 25-yard line. Lethridge complete the number 24, Matt DeBuck. And DeBuck is out to the 35, and a cheer from the Texas Tech throng 
as Dick Winder's Red Raider offense has a first down on its first possession of the second half. Well, they just got caught SC in a bad coverage. There's nobody on him. DeBuck making sure of the catch. 863 pound sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Florida with that reception. Hansbard with the pitch and Jeff Kopp is there to make the stop. After a two yard gain by Hansbard, it'll be second down eight for Texas Tech. Thinking one of the problems that they have with that sprint up to the line of scrimmage, Jim, not unlike the Buffalo Bills hurry up, is that when you start to do that, if you go three and out, you're putting a lot of pressure in your defense because you're not taking much time off the clock. As witnessed at the end of the first half, we saw the time of possession two to one for SC. And I think a lot of that had to do with a lot of this hurry up and three and out stuff. Four wide receivers on second down eight. Lockridge got away from the home rush, kept the football, and finally was driven out of bounds by Cop as he approached the 40-yard line. It's going to be third down and about six yards to go for Red Raider first down. To this point in the game, they are one of six on third down conversions. A lot of catch words in the NFL, Jim, and one of them is escapability. And while he may be inaccurate in terms of throwing, he certainly has that when he's running with the football. He must have gone through about three SC Trojans. It looked to me that like he was set for a sack. Four wide again on third and six. And Lethridge flips the football toward Alton Crane, but Crane wasn't looking. So it becomes an incompletion and another punting situation for Texas Tech. It's about the fourth or fifth time we've seen quarterbacks slip down. Footing must not be that good between the hash marks. Dick Winder says, all right, Zebby, let's just keep learning. There are the numbers on Brad Cade in the first half. Ken Grace waits to receive for SC at about his 24-yard line. This one will drop and be downed. Short kick downed at the SC 34-yard line. So the Trojans will have excellent field position and a 34-0 lead when we come back. Might have been a touchdown. Bart Thomas with what amounts to a desperation shoestring tackle after the long gainer at 32 yards from Johnson to Johnson. Same route that he had earlier at the top of your screen. It's a flag route. He runs clear across the field to the opposite flag. Good throw by Johnson and right there. Just stumbles at the end or else he might have gone the distance. So it'll be first down from inside the Texas Tech 35-yard line. Got it. Johnson leaves the field. Six catches, 114 yards, and one touchdown. Sean Walters had a running touchdown. Rob Johnson threw a touchdown pass to Terry Barnum, and John Herpin ran an interception in. Those were the four SC touchdowns in the first half. Rodney Sermons gets the call on first down. Sean Banks makes the tackle, and we visit Bob Golick. Bob. Well, I promised you guys the origin of the tortillas being thrown on the field, which, by the way, is not sanctioned by the Texas Tech uh, uh, faculty there. But uh, Mary Oleg has the, the theory for us here. Actually, the Aggies call this the tortilla school on the hill. And since that time, we started using the tortillas and decorating them. And you said there was another one. What was the other theory? Then we did it just for the fun of it because we never won a football game. <laughs> okay, well, take your pick. They won enough to get to the Cotton Bowl this year. On second down four, Sean Walters with the football. And Walters, who ran hard in the first half, has enough for a first down here as he moves it inside the 25 to about the 22. Six foot, 225 pound sophomore out of Arlington. Arlington, Texas, that is, very nearby. His mother, a first cousin to Earl Campbell, and some in the family call Sean Little Earl because of what they say is a physical resemblance. On first and 10 from the 22. This is Leonard Green. And Green, who had a couple of big plays from tailback in the first half, is stopped by Damon Wickware after a short game. Call it no gain, maybe a loss of two. I think Walters is going to have to catch a few, get a few more yards before you can compare him with Earl Campbell. The biggest set of thighs I think I've ever seen on Earl Campbell. Amazing. On second and 12, Leonard Green had running room for a moment, but the hole quickly closed as Robert Johnson reacted quickly from his linebacker position. John Robinson 
trying to spread the wealth around, as you mentioned, four different tailbacks carrying the ball, giving run all an opportunity to to perform in a big game like this, a big bowl game. There were moments in the first half when the offensive line was performing at such a level that John could have carried the ball. Yeah. <laughs> at 59 years of age, yeah, it's amazing. Third down, 10. Johnson down the middle to Keyshawn. And Keyshawn's got a touchdown. What an effort. Wow. Here comes the Heisman pose. No, he's not going to do it. But he does pull off the helmet and celebrate for those near enough to watch. Well, notice, notice that he made it a point, Jim, to go over to the SC side so he wouldn't get hit with the tortillas. Deep slant route turns him around. Watch the effort at the end, though, backpedaling, using the man's body, reaching the ball over. That's a tremendous effort. You know, he, he has said, Jim, that he is going to come back for his senior year. I would think that he's going to be thinking long and hard over the next two months about that particular decision. Powerful, graceful player, six feet four inches tall, 205 pounds. Cole Ford nails the extra point. Ten minutes, 29 seconds to go in the third quarter in Dallas. SC leads 41-0. On pass to Keyshawn Johnson. Keyshawn's second TD of the day, and what an effort. An effort there with the back pedal. You, a nice balance to stay on his feet. That's kind of like the crab that they teach you when you're in Pop Warner. Keyshawn did not give us the Heisman pose that he had promised to deliver at some point during the game. He says he's going to be thinking about trying to win the Heisman next year. Pretty tough to do it from the wide receiver position. Cole Ford kicks it off the side of his foot. Out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Illegal procedure against the kicking team. So illegal procedure against the Trojans, and Ford will kick it again. This weekend, join NBC Sports as the race for the AFC title continues with exciting divisional playoff action Saturday NBC Sports in Pittsburgh as the Steelers host the Cleveland Browns. That action begins at 12 noon Eastern in the studio with Greg Gumbel, Mike Ditka, Joe Gibbs, and Ahmad Rashad on NFL Live. Then Sunday, the other AFC berth for the championship game to be decided in San Diego as the Chargers play host to Dan Marino and the Dolphins. Coverage begins at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, again with NFL Live. AFC Divisional Playoffs this weekend on NBC Sports. First down and 10 for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. The long-suffering Zebby Lethridge throws and completes for first down yardage along the sideline to Tony Darden. Darden out of bounds up at the 48-yard line. This is the combination that began to click just at the end of the first half. And just when you're thinking that trailing 41-0, the Red Raiders couldn't get arrested in Dallas today, the mascot proves you wrong. Ended up getting in a fight, apparently, with the mascot from SC, and it was so unruly that security had to come and escort him out. <laughs> escorted the mascot out. Ball is punched into the air. Number 90, Marcus Bonds. Junior defensive end from L.A. Monroe High School and West L.A. Community College. Batting Lethbridge's pass into the air. It'll be second down 10. So the mascot was detained for aggressively pursuing the SC mascot. Is that the overall picture? Uh, that's that's uh, the information that I was given. They tell us that the mustache had to be sewed back on. Well, that's quite a punch that the SC Trojan guy had there. Knocked the mustache right off his face. <laughs> Wow. Second down, 10. Lethridge changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Getting away from pressure. And then finding his way toward other pressure as Willie Lowry makes the stop. Well, evidently, uh, evidently, they didn't escort him all the way out. He must have talked him out of it or frightened him with that big gun. Because he's back. The dance is pretty frightening, too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. waking in my boots. Third down, nine. I guess rhythm is an acquired skill. Tough in that outfit, yes. Saturday Night Fever at eight. On third down, nine, Lethridge fires and almost completes. Sammy Knight there to bat it away. The pass was intended to Jason Lavender. And so that will bring up fourth down and another punting situation for Texas Tech. Good piece of defense by Knight, scrambling out of the pocket. Lethridge buys himself some extra time. Watch him cut right in front just at the last minute and bat it down. Great effort. Brad Cade doing just as much kicking 
for his black-shirted teammates as Cole Ford has done for the Trojans of SC. Problem, Caden Hunter towards the place kicker. Great punt. Most effective play of the day for the Red Raiders as with a great punt and terrific coverage by Ryan Jones, number 43, the Raiders pin SC at their seven-yard line. We'll be back. In uniform for a lot of those great Colorado offensive players, including quarterback Cordell Stewart. Meanwhile, Rob Johnson apparently has finished his active playing career for USC as Brad Otten comes on to quarterback the Trojans and gives the football to Leonard Green. Green across the 10 to about the 14. Johnson with his numbers revised as a result of today's 289 yards passing is the all-time career passing leader at SC. You know, Jim, what's impressive about this is you look at that list, the four that he passed, all with NFL experience. And, of course, Rodney Pete's still in the league as the backup for the Dallas Cowboys. You remember Marunovic and his ill-fated career with the Raiders. Paul McDonald, the steady backup of the Cleveland Browns. And, of course, Sean Salisbury bounced a little bit around the league. Amongst the teams, I believe Seattle was one. Still bouncing, Salisbury. John Walters with the football. Well, in fact, he had a big he had a big game with Minnesota at the end of the season. Won a game for them to clinch the division championship. Jabbar Thomas making the stop. I mention that only because inevitably when you see the team uh, statistics like that, you say, well, big deal, look at the people that he passed. But in this case, all four of them NFLers. And I'd be interested in your opinion what you think of his career in the NFL. He's limited, unlimited what? Talking about uh, Rob Johnson? Are you talking about Rob? I am. Oh, okay. I think he's a very accurate passer. Big guy at 6'4", 220. He's got a shot. Third down seven for Brad Otten and the Trojans. And Otten is going to get a touchdown pass to Keyshawn Johnson. And this will be, if there are no flags, and there aren't, an 86-yard TD pass from Otten to Johnson. Keyshawn's going to break some receiving yardage records today. There was no defender within, oh, 40 yards of Keyshawn as he took it on into the end zone. It'll be an 86-yard TD pass, which will stretch the lead to 47 nothing. And the numbers on Keyshawn are just out of sight at this point, as I believe this is going to put him well over 200 yards, probably closer to 250 yards receiving for the day. Does that mean Cotton Spire's record is gone? I'm afraid Cotton Spire has been erased from the Cotton Bowl record book for receiving yardage. Cotton Spire of Texas, who had that huge game against Notre Dame. Now here's Cole Ford, who's uh, likely to break some Cotton Bowl records for kick scoring today. And Ford's extra point makes it 48 to zip. Well, and what could be argued is, is maybe the least celebrated 86-yard touchdown in history. You see the defender, in that case, Robert Johnson, and what the linebacker is on a wide receiver like Keyshawn Johnson, man for man, I'll never know. But he could have walked the last 50 yards, and as you mentioned, shattering the Cotton Bowl receiving yard record. There's his mother. Keyshawn's mom. Very and proud. Keyshawn Johnson, living with his mom, grew up in the shadow of the University of Southern California in the neighborhood of the Coliseum, was an SC ball boy as a child and even used to hang out at practices and help the trainers and managers with their work around practice. So he's been involved in SC football since early childhood and that smile has been there ever since. Eight catches, 222 yards, a big day for Keyshawn and his mama in Dallas. Oh, she's, I mean, I, I don't think he could have dreamed of a better day than this. I mean, you, you, 200 yard receiving days, I mean, come on. Well, how many times does the defender fall down for you at the 30 so that you can go <laughs> the last 70 yards? Not often. Lonely. <laughs> oh, my goodness. This is distressing from the standpoint of competition. Seven minutes, 51 seconds to go in the third now, and it's 48 nothing Southern Cal. Cole Ford is uh, going to be looking soon to see if, if the backup kicker wants to get a little action. Well, maybe not. He enjoys this. Well, you keep talking about being leg weary, and the guy keeps kicking it into the end zone, so he's got some going. I'm speaking figuratively, not literally. Let's go to Bob Golick on the sideline. Hi, guys. I'm down with John Cropper, president of the Cotton Bowl, I've, which I've played in a couple of times. Thank you very much for hospitali hospitality. What is the future of the game? Obviously, here is kind of a kind of a blowout, but but uh, there have been some changes. What are the what's the future for the game? Well, uh, starting next year, we'll have basically the number two team from the Big 12 will become the host team, 
and then on the other side of the ball you'll have the number two from the pack 10 or the winner of the whack and we've developed the parlay with the holiday bowl in san diego where we pick first and then they will pick the other team and in the event that one of those two teams is in tier one then notre dame will be considered if they're not in tier one they're a very rich history with this bowl game it's got to be very frustrating for you and the, and the rest of the cotton bowl committee uh, to, to miss out on the coalition deal yeah it, frankly it was very devastating to us and you know things change in uh, football and business whatever it is and in three years they'll probably change again and as far as the cotton bowl is concerned we're going to be sitting at the table when they deal the cards out well i can personally say this has always been one of the most enjoyable bowl, bowl games i've ever seen I want to thank you for Gentlemen, good luck. My Thanks. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right, Bob, back on the field. The pitch back to Alton Crane goes awry, and Crane covers it back at the Texas Tech seven-yard line. Option play. Pitched it without looking. Crane wasn't there. Leaving the Red Raiders with your basic third down and 23. situation uh, in which they've struggled today. Lethridge. Over Darden's head. Sammy Knight there on the coverage, and it will be fourth down, and now punter Brad Cade will have to stand midway deep in his end zone and kick to Ken Grace will be waiting at midfield or just inside it. It's a pretty good day, actually. You know, that last punt that he had, you know, down inside. 42 the, yarder. But not just that, but I mean, up to that point, he'd been having some, you know, having some good, uh, some distance. SC trying for the block and almost getting it. Grace allows it to roll. It takes a Texas Tech roll. And uh, so once again, the punt will not be returned. Marcus Colton was downfield with excellent coverage, and the Trojans are happy, leaving 48 zip. For his mother, game ball. Game ball. My eighth catch, 222 yards, three touchdowns. There you go, Mom. Thanks. The third official Cotton Bowl football that Keyshawn has had the privilege of disposing of today. You see his numbers. Eight catches, 222 yards, the 222, a Cotton Bowl record, and just seven yards short of an SC record. On the first down, Trojans staying conservative on the ground. Zach Thomas and Bart Thomas ganging up to stop the run after a gain of only a couple. Tony Boselli, like his teammate Rob Johnson, probably on the bench for the rest of the day. I don't think there's any doubt that he's going to be a first-round pick. And, of course, there's a great history at SC of first-round pick offensive linemen. You think of Don Mosbar, Bruce Matthews, Anthony Munoz, and, of course, John Robinson when he commented regarding Baselli. Very high praise. Robinson saying that Baselli is as good as any of the great names to have played on the offensive front for the men of Troy in the past. Brad Otten, reserve quarterback already with one touchdown pass, unleashes his effort for another. Robert Johnson on the coverage, and we'll take a look at Robinson's quote on Tony Baselli. Playing as well as any lineman he's coached, and he's seen a few good linemen, of course, some of the names that we had mentioned. Says Tony's playing right up there with him. Let me let me point out two names in particular, Anthony Munoz and Bruce Matthews. More than likely, those two are Hall of Famers, Jim, and to say that Baselli's playing as well as those two, that, that, that is as high a praise as you can get for an offensive lineman. Brad Buddy was pretty doggone good, too, and of course, Ron Yarry long preceded Robinson at SC, but he's one of the greatest names in the history of that great program. Dillon Washington with the catch from Otten. Robert Johnson makes the stop. And it hasn't been the breakout day that Coach John Robinson and some others on his staff expected for freshman Dillon Washington, but by the time he got in the football game, the Trojans were already rolling. Well, it could have been if they had just focused on the running attack, but they had so many big plays with the passing attack that he was never afforded the opportunity to get a lot of carries. Yeah, why not just go ahead and throw to Keyshawn when it's so easy? Dane Johnson deep to receive for Texas Tech. John Stonehouse to punt as the Trojans are stopped. And the punt bounces into the end zone, so if it is Lethridge, Lethridge and the Red Raider offense will be beginning at the 20-yard line. 
Here are some of the great names to have played in the Cotton Bowl and to have gone on to earn entry into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Well, that's an impressive list. I remember the Earl Campbell game, as you do probably, too, in 1977 when they played Notre Dame. And Notre Dame that, that year stopped Earl Campbell, I guess 119 yards of stopping him, jumped from fifth to first in the polls as a result of defeating Texas in the Cotton Bowl. That 17 tackles per goal at that day. Look at the time for Zebby Lethridge. And Lethridge unloads, complete to Jason Lavender. Who? Jason Lavender. No, no, the guy with the tackles. Oh, that was Bob Golick. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Our ace sideline reporter. He was most valuable defensive player in that Cotton Bowl game, New Year's Day 78, as he helped to spur the Irish to that big victory over Campbell and the Longhorns. That was a gain of six on first down. Lethridge to Lavender, and it'll be second down four. 437, clock running in the third period. Texas Tech. Hansbard, the 180-pound freshman out of DeSoto, is knocked out of bounds by Grant Pearsall. They had 400-yard games this season, Jim, and finally finds, finds a hole through some of the second-string secondary people there for the Trojans. Nice run up to the 45. Hansbard energized the Texas Tech running game. Lethridge gets rid of the football intended for Hansbard on the far side, and there was a Trojan defender looming up looking for the touchdown pick. It was Brian Kelly. Not Ronnie Lott? He's wearing 42, isn't he? That's right. Well, there's so many players on the sidelines, you can't retire numbers. Byron Hansbard in the game, eight carries for 38 yards. Creditable effort for him. Of course, it's a little bit easier to run the football for yardage when you're down 41, 48, nothing, and the opposing team knows you must pass to have a chance to score. Lethridge completes deep into FC territory to Sheldon Bass. Gerald Carruthers makes the stop, but another freshman with an offensive contribution for the Texas Tech Red Raiders all the way down to the 27-yard line. We've talked a little bit about Lethridge accuracy. He struggled with it, but right there, he puts it right on the money down the middle of the field. Good extension there. Nice catch. Big game for the Red Raiders. Leading receiver all year for the Red Raiders. 34 catches on the season for Sheldon Bass, the freshman out of Odessa. Hansbard stopped momentarily at the line of scrimmage, but breaks free for a gain of about five. Was Jesse Davis, number 23, a reserve corner, on to make the stop. Hansbart initially runs right into the back of his pulling guard, but able to cut back out to the outside, make a little something of it. Call it a gain of three. It'll be second down seven from the 24. Red Raiders trying to get on the scoreboard. Lethridge with plenty of open territory in front of him, chooses to throw. to Darden clicks and it'll be first and goal Texas Tech so Lethridge is dangerous he gets out of the contain and look at Darden's feet disciplined enough to keep both in bounds the piece of receiving Tony Darden who had expected to be the starting quarterback had the upper hand for the job battled Lethridge early in the season ultimately Zebby came on and Tony moved to receiver now Lethridge trying to get into the end zone winds up losing a couple. Number 41, Brian Haas, there to make the stop for the Trojans. Is it just me or when Lethridge goes back to pass? <laughs> the play takes a long time. He seems like he scrambles every single time. He reminds me a little bit, a very little bit, maybe the resemblance is because of number eight, of the way Steve Young was when he started. You know, always, if, if things broke down early, he'd start to run. And with time, Lethridge will understand that he needs to stay in the pocket just a little bit longer. Center Scott Fitzgerald said to us the other day, half the job as an offensive lineman for this team is being aware of where Zebby is. Stacy Mitchell with the droppage in the flat. Could have been a Texas Tech TD. He couldn't quite hold on. Jesse Davis, there's coming for Troy. Well, nice throw, too. 
Droppage. Yeah, very catchable. You see Lefter's not very happy about it. Come on, come on, I put it out there, make the catch. Of course, remember, Stacy Mitchell, in fairness to Lethridge, five foot five and 150 pounds. Tough From DeSoto, Texas, Byron Hansbard's high school teammates. They arrived as a package this fall in Lubbock. whistled dead and now we'll wait to see what the officials have called here there's a fabulous familial connection story surrounding field Scoville the man who held for that kick before the ball is snapped movement by the offense five yards still one try well they'll have to make another try at the PAT there's Scoville the sophomore wide receiver from here in Dallas his grandfather field Scoville for a long time, in fact, for decades, the guiding light of the Cotton Bowl, he was known here in town as Mr. Cotton Bowl. His father, John Scoville, a Texas Tech quarterback in the 60s, almost brought the Red Raiders here for their first time as Southwest Conference rep, but they fell just a little bit short. And now Field gets to play on the final Texas Tech team to actually make it as the Cotton Bowl representative from the Southwest Conference and holds for the successful PAT. Nine play, 80-yard drive, took two and a half minutes on the clock. Five-yard touchdown run by Zebby Lethridge averts the shutout for Texas Tech. Well, Lethridge is a freshman. These aren't the first, and they certainly aren't going to be the last tacklers that have been made foolish by his scrambles. He looks to the left, there's nobody open. Right in his sights, he should have been sacked right there. He avoids one tackle. Now the cut back here cuts to the outside. FC just can't get him. Nice run by Lethridge. Want to see it again? Right there, cuts right past him. And, of course, on the sidelines, the defensive coaches are telling Willie Lowry, hey, you got to make that play. And Lowry's coming back and saying, man, this guy is quick. Offensive coordinator Dick Winder says, okay, guys, we're only 41 down. Let's stay in it. 17 minutes, 14 seconds left in the game. Texas Tech with an unusual kickoff lineup. As you can see, they have lined up with they want six players back at the 15. Now they get a full running start. Here comes the onside try. And it looks like the Red Raiders have covered it. Well, they've covered it, but it was before 10 yards. Yep, didn't go 10. Needed to get to the 45. So that'll make it SC ball in Texas Tech territory at the 44-yard line. 1978 Cotton Bowl. The Irish came into the game ranked fifth in the polls. Texas came in ranked number one inside track to the national championship. Heisman Trophy winner Earl Campbell. But Bob Golick had 17 tackles and helped to stop Campbell for much of the day. Joe Montana threw for a touchdown. The Irish withstood the 100-yard effort by Campbell and moved from fifth in the polls to unanimous national champs that year. Under Dan Devine, the beneficiary of his team's inspired play that day here in Dallas. On first down for SC, Otten throws complete to Ken Grace. And Grace is close to a first down near the Texas Tech 30-yard line. As we bring you back live, and uh, obviously we showed you that Notre Dame-Texas flashback, largely because our sideline reporter Bob Golick with his 17 tackles was the defensive most valuable player of that game. And very shortly, we'll be going down to Bob to uh, 
to offer a chance for his recollections on that day. Second down, less than a yard to go for a first down. Otten drops straight back and says, let's try for a touchdown, and throws it. Incomplete intended for Larry Parker, and the flag goes down. No, tortillas go down as Verone McKinley covers Parker in the end zone. Hard to tell the flags from the tortillas. <laughs> Especially when they're corn tortillas, as many of them are. Well, Verone McKinley, for being a second stringer, stride for stride, good piece of coverage there. It's not quite as difficult to separate the penalty flags, which are bright yellow, from the flour tortillas. But the corn tortillas present an entirely different problem. That's a good point. Yeah? It's inescapable. Oh, they have a maize color. Third down, less than a yard for an SC first down. Trojans lead 48-7 in the third. Brad Otten gives to Sean Walters, and no one is fooled. Tony Daniels, number 86. Big play man along the defensive front for Texas Tech. Breaks through. Walters can't get started. But they're going to let Otten go for it. So now the Trojans will try for the first down on fourth down four. Football at the Texas Tech 37-yard line. Under a minute remaining in the third period. Period in which SC struck the two touchdowns. Both of them touchdown catches by Keyshawn Johnson. And then Texas Tech came back to finally get on the board. Cotton throwing on fourth down. Overthrow John Allred, the tight end. And Allred was wide open, so Otten's inexperience shows there. 6'6", really? 215-pound sophomore out of Tumwater, Washington. Really had what he wanted there in terms of the secondary. A little bit rusty. Watch the tight end here just cutting the seam, get right behind Thomas, the linebacker. He's wide open, and as you mentioned, Otten lacking the touch to get the ball in there. He'll complete that pass next year when he's the starting quarterback and Rob Johnson's playing in the NFL. Timeout, Texas Tech. So the Raiders using their first timeout of the second half. There'll be two remaining. We've got 40 seconds left on the clock in the third period. And we take advantage of this opportunity to remind you about Tuesday night on NBC. Tomorrow night, NBC will help you laugh your way into the new year with all new episodes of Wings, Something Wilder, with guest star Michelle Lee and Frazier, then a special episode of Friends. A great comedy lineup, followed by an all-new Dateline. It's all tomorrow night, starting at 8, 7 Central, right here on NBC. Lethridge completes the screen to Rod Hobbs, and Hobbs fights for yardage inside the SC 45 to about the 43 before Stuart Gage, number 79, makes the stop. And with that, the third quarter comes to a close in Dallas. So with three periods down, SC leading Texas Tech 48-7. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. For wide receiver Field Scoville of Texas Tech had hoped that his team would earn that trophy today, named for his grandfather. But tough sledding for the moment. Uh, Zeddy Lethridge releases the pass a few yards out of bounds. Tony Darden again, the man there to catch the football. Brian Kelly on the coverage. And it'll be third down for Texas Tech as the Red Raiders continue to operate from down 
Nice catch, but he didn't quite know where he was on the field, or rather, he drifted to where the ball was. Lethbridge needed to keep him in the field to play. Darden's a freshman from San Antonio, redshirt freshman. After moving from quarterback to wide receiver, he caught 11 balls for a 21.3 yard average per catch. And he has shown some stuff here today. So as you say, Lethbridge and Darden showing promise for future passing combination fireworks at Texas Tech. This time, Darden was looking for number 18, Sheldon Bass. So check it, Lethbridge was looking for Sheldon Bass. And with Kelly covering, the ball was overthrown. It'll be fourth down. Why not go for it fourth and seven at the other team's 43? Well, maybe you got the fake punt play coming up. Brad Cade is in the game. He's the punter. Long snapper Brad Spinks, a reserve tight end, sophomore out of Duncanville, goes ahead and snaps it to Cade, and Cade goes ahead and kicks it away. And this is Larry Parker. Bringing it back for SC, and Parker's across the 15 to about the 16-yard line before George Ramsey ran him out of bounds for Texas Tech. 14.37 to go in Dallas. Back. It's so hard to close. And to flavor of this game, visibly portrayed in the <laughs> shots of that 1938 Red Raider jacket you saw as we came back from commercial there. Brad Otten. Gives the football to Rodney Sermons. Sermons, one of four USC tailbacks to touch the football today. Gets it from the 8 out to about the 10. Cody McGuire, number 74. Freshman defensive tackle out of Crane, Texas. Makes the stop for the Red Raiders. Well, now the uh, younger offensive line for the USC Trojans get a chance to assert themselves. I'm sure that throughout the season, I'd have to recall the other blowouts that SC might have had. They probably had very little if any playing time so this is their chance to shine well they put 61 on the board against Cal so a lot of these guys surely played in that game second down Otten throws across the middle of Larry Parker and Parker has big yardage across the 35 near the 40 Bart Thomas knocks him out of bounds for Texas Tech and he wiped out a couple of assistant coaches and trainers there on the sideline too Parker showing some speed Watch as soon as he catches the ball. Look at the different gear that number 80 has. Comes across on the crossing route. Now he catches the ball. Now watch. He shifts gears. Long stride. Gets past. Now watch at the end when he gets knocked out of bounds. How many bodies go flying. He takes out about three guys. 31-yard gain. First down SC. Football is across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Good look at Parker. Six-foot-two-inch freshman out of Bakersfield. 528 total yards now in the game for SC. Sermons with the call on first down, and Sermons has a gain of about three. It'll be second down seven. Raider back Marcus Coleman making the stop for Texas Tech. Well, you can see the total yards, as you mentioned, Jim, over 500. It's a tripleton. It's a, it's a tripleton. Three times 172 would be 516, and uh, SC has more than that. So You did that without an abacus. Credit them with a tripleton. Left my abacus at home. Brad Otten, sophomore quarterback out of Tumwater, Washington, a transfer from Weber State, who literally fell into the lap of John Robinson and the Trojan program this year. Otten down the middle, and Parker almost made the catch. Number 25, Sean Hurd, there to bring it up at the last moment, and the flag is down. Flag down near the Trojan offensive backfield, so you suspect holding, but we'll see. Well, can I tell you about Otten, Todd, while they get ready to walk, mark this Holden off? Holden to the offense on the play. Ten yards. It's a great story. Yeah. Second down. Please. He's a little bit older than the average college sophomore because uh, he had a two-year Mormon mission in Italy. Then he went to Weber State, Division I AA, had one record-breaking season there and said, hmm, maybe I should be playing at a higher level. Wanted to go to Washington State, but Mike Price was already overloaded with quarterbacks in the Cougar program, so Brad turned around and said, well, maybe SC. I've heard of that student body right, student body left stuff. But I also remember hearing about a big red-headed quarterback who never had a Big Mac in his life. Sounds intriguing. Sean Walters with the call. And Walters, on second down, is stopped by Bart Thomas and Zach Thomas after a very short game. So Otten winds up coming from Tumwater, Washington to the program 
where the red-headed quarterback who never had a Big Mac once played, and that, of course, was famous surfer Todd Marinovich. The players say that Otten is as loose and happy-go-lucky a guy as you'll ever find on a football field. Steps into the huddle and says, hi, guys. Long time no see. <laughs> Third down 17 now for SC with 12-15 remaining in the game and we'll get a look at Otten's arm and Larry Parker is unable to hold on to the football as the Trojans tried to get the yardage underneath with the pass and run. You know, earlier in the season when uh, Johnson had hurt his ankle, Otten did a credible job stepping in for him and as you mentioned, I think that his attitude of being loose was helpful. I mean, Weaver State is certainly not USC in terms of big time football, but he came in there and just did an admirable job and nothing phased him. Well, he certainly isn't in awe of the mystique of the program. On field to punt it away is number 17, John Stonehouse of SC. Stonehouse's powerful leg delivers the ball inside the Texas Tech 20, number 10. Bo Adams on the reception there. And Jesse Davis was downfield to cover and see to it that Adams had nowhere to go. It'll be Texas Tech football inside their own 20-yard line when we come back. Dallas, UFC leading Texas Tech 48-7. And let's properly document this fumble by Bo Adams off that punt by John Stonehouse. It was recovered by Texas Tech. So Zebby Lethridge and company operating again from inside their 20. And Lethridge has a, about an eight-yard scramble before Scott Fields was there to force him out of bounds for USC. And now Lethridge is down momentarily. And Texas Tech trainers are on the spot. If Lethridge is unable to keep going, then in all probability, Tony Darden moves from his wide receiver spot to quarterback, number 11. Let's take another look. Just at the end, he gets hit from the back side. Looks like he might have landed on his wrist a little bit funny. You see there the left shoulder and elbow folding underneath. We'll speculate until we see at the end. And now Texas Tech is going to be charged with a timeout as trainers continue to work with Lethridge. And now the offensive coaching staff comes onto the field to chat with Tony Darden in anticipation of Darden's move from wide receiver to quarterback. Well, I hope this isn't serious. Yeah, you'd hate to see Lethridge come up with anything in the way of a serious injury on a day like this. Down 48-7, just trying to gain some positive experience. You know what? I think he's got a bloody nose, I think you're right. I think you're right. And that gives us a chance to talk about ER. It's the powerful show that has the critics raving and viewers watching in record numbers tonight. NBC will show you how it all began. ER, a special two-hour movie event. Tonight at 9, 8 central here on NBC. So if you're a fan of ER, you won't want to miss this special two-hour movie version of ER. 9, 8 central right here on NBC. You segue from a bloody nose to ER. I was forced to. <laughs> it wasn't my choice. I'm impressed. <laughs> Coming up, immediately following this Cotton Bowl game, IBM OS2 Fiesta Bowl, number four ranked Colorado against Notre Dame. Last time in uniform for Cordell Stewart of Colorado, Michael Westbrook, the outstanding wide receiver. And what about Rashan Salam, the Heisman Trophy winner? He has another year of eligibility, should he choose to use it? No. Tony Darden is now operating at quarterback for Texas Tech, and Darden gives to Alton Crane the tailback, and Crane has first down yardage across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. So the Raiders will continue to pursue this possession. As you see the numbers on Darden for the season, 26 completions, 61 attempts, 381 yards, two TDs. Likes to throw deep. Darden with four wide receivers. Throws into the flat. It's intended for... Intended for uh, Field Scoville and Gerald Henry was there to defend, to belt the receiver to the turf and to look for a possible interception. Gerald Henry was almost too fast here. Watch as the ball comes towards you. He's almost too early. Should have gone after the ball instead of the hit. He might have had the pick. 
Final numbers on Zebby Lethridge if he is unable to re-enter at quarterback. 13 of 29, 167 yards, one rushing TD, two interceptions. Darden throws, Crane drops. It'll be third down. Had what they wanted. SC came with an outside blitz. Had the screen pass underneath. Just couldn't hold on. Well, if you appreciate tradition and history at all in college football, you have to see this as a sad way for the Southwest Conference to end its 55-year marriage with the Cotton Bowl. In some fabulous games throughout the years, and we documented some of the great players that have been here in the Cotton Bowl, and certainly this is not the way Cotton Bowl officials in the community of Dallas wanted it to end. Byron Hansbard goes in motion from tailback. Darden gets away from Willie Lowry. And now with room, Darden throws downfield out of bounds. Flag goes down, and I think that flag will denote the fact that Darden was beyond the line of scrimmage when he released the pass. I would agree. Although, then again, he was awfully close to the sidelines. Did he also get belted after the play was over, too? Could be a personal foul call against SC. Linus, there you see the stakes right there. He's across the stake at about the 33 when he throws the ball. Gerald Carruthers was the man who made contact. I think he was definitely past the line of scrimmage. I agree, and it seemed to me that Crothers' hit was in the field of play. Quarterback was across the line of scrimmage when he made the pass. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Good eye, Jim. Fabuloso. Fourth down and ten for the Red Raiders and the ubiquitous Brad Cade comes on for yet another punt. Junior out of Woolforth. Is he approaching a record? Could be. We'll have to rifle through the old Cotton Bowl record book one more big time as the punt is handled by Larry Parker. Successfully so at the SC 32-yard line. Trojans will have it, leading 48-7 when we come back. There for the Fiesta Bowl. Heisman Trophy winner Rashan Salam, one of the stars you'll see in that game. And now USC. <laughs> with as enviable a Heisman Trophy history as just about any other school. Gives to tailback Rodney Sermons on first down. Sermons has a gain of about two. It'll be second down eight. Robert Johnson made the stop for Texas Tech. <laughs> SC's present athletic director, John Robinson's boss, is the man who was the first of SC's Heisman Trophy winners, Mike Garrett. Got, got, got the trophy in 1965. Remember the clinching touchdown in Super Bowl IV, just for the half. Sebby Lethridge with his now bloodied nose. I wonder if it's broken. Why they're holding it so tight, it looks like it might be. Sean Walters, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas, who earlier today got his 11th touchdown of this football year. Gets the call on second down. We take a look at the SC Heisman Trophy winners. All of them running backs. Mike Garrett, O.J. Simpson, Charles White, and Marcus Allen, both white. And Allen won the trophy during John Robinson's first tenure as head coach at SC. Interesting that Charles White won the trophy with the fullback, Marcus Allen. And then the next year when Charles White was gone, Allen went to tailback. Of course, had the two great years there as the main man. Still holds the NCAA record for most... 200-yard games in the season by a uh, Division I AA rusher. Second most yards in the season. Cotton throws down the middle. And Laval Woods in the football game at fullback has the catch and an SC first down. And Otten gets up slowly after having been belted by Ryan Donahue. One of the advantages, as you mentioned, of being six foot six and 200 plus pounds, you know, you just can't afford the luxury anymore of having a quarterback who's slight or frail because they take so many hits. His offensive lineman actually gets pushed into him. Watch from the left of your screen. You're going to see. Well, we're not going to get a chance you're to see to a pass see. reception. Yeah. Here it is. Number 63 for the USC Trojans. Mm. Andre Abrams gets pushed into him. Fortunately, he's all right. Walters met at the line of scrimmage, and now the Red Raiders swarm over him. It'll be a loss of about a yard, and second down, 11. Oh. William Ritter, number 99, a senior from Odessa, oldest player on the Texas Tech team, getting onto the field to play in the Cotton Bowl at age 24. I'm interested in your speculation as to why Walters is still in the game. 
He's starting tailback. Oh, because he's 225 pounds and therefore the most durable of the four SC tailbacks. So if this is going to be heavy metal against a uh, Texas Tech defense that's grinding it out down the stretch, he's less in danger of being injured than, say, Green, Sermons, or Washington. How's that for a wild guess? Bogus. Bogus, huh? Possibly. Second down 11 with 8 minutes, 10 seconds to go. William Ritter with the football. Or check it, William Ritter with the tackle. I was just thinking that maybe they wanted to get him 100 yards. Rodden Sermons with the football. Think they wanted to get him 100 yards? If they get him 106 yards and they uh, combine the bowl numbers with regular season numbers, he would he would have had a 1,000-yard year. I personally don't think of that as a 1,000-yard year, incidentally. I don't think your bowl numbers count with your regular season numbers for milestones like that. Well, it probably shouldn't, but then again, you know, you get... Then what about all those players who played 12 and 14-game seasons for their 1,000-yard games, and now guys go 16 games to get 1,000? That's the NFL. Third down, pass incomplete from Otten. Well, I know, but we're just arguing records. 11, 12 games. What? Doesn't count? There's one of the SC Heisman Trophy winners, Charles White, now on John Robinson's staff as the running back. Running back. Hi. Running backs coach. I can read. People forget that he also led the league in rushing in the 1987 season, but of course, that was the strike year. Big asterisk there because he played through those strike games against uh, some bartenders and firemen. Dane Johnson is deep to receive as John Stonehouse punts it away for SC. And Johnson fumbles the football, and it looks like a white jersey might have gotten to it. It would give SC another possession and a possible scoring threat inside the Texas Tech 20 if the officials agree with all those SC players who are pointing toward that goal line. And they do. SC football. Here's the fumble. Just coming off his foot there. He just couldn't quite corral it. It's unfortunate. Scott Fields, number six. The junior out of Ontario, Bishop, Bishop Amat High School. This is the man who got on the football for SC. Keith Burns, brand new SC defensive coordinator, going into next year. Pat Fields on the helmet and says, you'll make a lot of plays like that for me next year, Scott. I promise you, you will. Bishop Amat rings a bell. Big time high school. Tremendous football program. Recently played, uh, recently played before, I think, more than 30,000 in uh, the Big A in Anaheim for regional high school championship. Wasn't Bishop Lamont the school with uh, J.K. McKay and uh, Pat Hayden? Yes. Otten's pass is caught by Anthony Volsan, and there's another one of those Heisman Trophy winners, and the man who, as I mentioned, is now the athletic director at SC, Mike Garrett. What a classy man he is. He was one of those running backs early on, remember, Jim, that they said was just too small. You know, he just can't play in the NFL. He's too small. He's only 5'9", and, of course, now he's got to be laughing at the fact that now all the great runners in the National Football League, Emmitt Smith, Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders, they're not too small. Tank Stram, ahead of his time with the Chiefs, found a way to hide Garrett behind the Jim Tyrers of the world. The give is to Rodney Sermons, and Sermons is inside the 15 on second down. Marcus Coleman there to make the stop for Texas Tech. Clock running down toward the six-minute mark. Trojans leading 48-7. Questions remaining. Will they go over 50? Will they achieve the largest margin of victory in the 59-year history of the game? Both of those goals now 14 yards away. Well, actually, a field goal away. 43 points, the margin of victory is a record 46 to 3 a couple of years ago when Miami defeated Texas. And of course, the field goal 51 7 would give them 44. On third down, Sermons with the ball and John Robinson keeping it on the ground out of dignity and respect for Spike Dykes and his staff and David Guise there to make the stop for. Texas Tech as the Red Raiders are playing mostly reserves on defense now. It'll be fourth down from the 14-yard line, and and Todd, we're in four-down territory under these circumstances. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that they're going to run the ball, and I think you you the, the operative word there was dignity. John Robinson has no intention of 
of trying to get over the 50-point mark. It's no big deal for him. The game is well in hand. No desire to embarrass the Red Raiders or Dykes. Or any of those longtime Southwest Conference stalwarts in Dallas who have respect for the Cotton Bowl game, but alas, he fooled us. There's a pass down the middle. Right in. Complete to number 84, Jeff Dix. Donnie Taylor with the tackle. Well, it's not that he fooled him so much. It's simply the fact that, you know, your second-string quarterback gets in. What are you supposed to tell him? Don't try. Makes a nice throw. It's Dilt, not Dits. Jeff Dilt, the reserve tight end with that catch. It's an easy mistake. Just a mispronunciation. Not even the vaguest of implications there. First and goal from the three-yard line. Clock running, four and a half minutes to go. by the referee and the way Otten is chatting with the referee it looks as though this one might go against the Trojans and bring the touchdown back <laughs> illegal ship man never got set five yards still first down didn't, didn't the, you're mentioning the name didn't uh, didn't the Yankees have a third baseman with Mickey Klutz a couple years ago sure did more than a couple. What a, what a, but what a terrible name for a fielder. Right? Not at all germane to the Cotton Bowl on this January 2, but nevertheless, well, no, 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 a no, no, fascinating no. observation. No, when you mispronounce... You're right. When you mispronounce... Mickey Clutch, Clutch, not a great Dits. name for a fielder, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, there was... I know. Okay. Ditz indicating that he might not be mentally prepared to play with this complicated offense, right? Cotton <laughs> throws, incomplete, intended for Jeff Dilt. The man who made the catch that got him down here into this first and goal position, and now it will be third down. Now, well, Dilts had an opportunity for a gimme touchdown. But alas, he ditched out and couldn't make the catch. Well, Brad Otten throwed it ahead of him instead. Maybe he oughtn't to have thrown it. <laughs> To the penalty it is second down and goal from the eighth called to third the penalty preserved it down and now rodney sermons gets inside the five to about the four before donnie taylor and robert johnson make the stop and here it will be third down and goal well this is four down territory i'm guessing here that uh that they're saying to themselves let's see if we can do it with our offensive line let's punch it in between the tackles Rodney Sermons was in the end zone once, but that touchdown was called back as the result of the illegal shift. So now, the Trojans will go on third and goal from the four. Of course, the play-action pass that they add to Dilts they might give that a shot. Sermons. Market at about the two. Sean Johnson makes the stop for Texas Tech. And now, once again, as we mentioned, four down territory. Football is at the two yard line. Otten has his instructions from the sideline. Red Raiders ought to be well advised to expect a running play at this point, I think. Although on the most recent fourth down try, Otten threw to Dilts down the middle. Now here he's going to throw again. And Dilts makes the catch. Donnie Taylor was there, number 49, to cover, but Dilts had enough daylight to reach out and cradle the Otten throw with one hand, and so... The touchdown catch for 21-year-old sophomore tight end Jeff Diltz out of West Covina, California. Boy, did he get away with a push, but that was a nice catch. He just completely pushes Donnie Taylor out of the way, reaches back with a one hand and comes up with it. Nice catch. And you mentioned Pat Hayden. Diltz is from West Covina. That's Pat Hayden's hometown. Cole Ford boots the extra. 
extra point out of Ryan Lenderman's hold, and with two minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the game, Southern Cal's in position to achieve the largest margin of victory ever in the Cotton Bowl. The Cotton Bowl on the state fairgrounds in Dallas. USC now leads Texas Tech 55 to seven, with two minutes, 40 seconds remaining after Brad Otten's second touchdown pass of the game. The reserve quarterback completing from two yards out on fourth down to reserve tight end Jeff Diltz. And the extra point by Ford makes it 55 SC, seven for Texas Tech. Now Ford to kick off yet again. Exceptionally short kick for Ford. Is fielded on the fly by one of the up men for Texas Tech. And number 42 for Texas Tech is knocked down. Now, because of the length of today's game, we're going to let many of you go. Those of you in Texas and Southern California will remain here for the completion of the Cotton Bowl. We're going to send the rest of you all across the country out to Phoenix to pick up the Fiesta Bowl with Charlie Jones and Randy Cross. Let's take you to Charlie right now. Those of you in Southern California and Texas remain to see the completion of this football game. And new on the field at quarterback is Son Cavazos. Cavazos, the number three quarterback for Texas Tech, who threw six passes all year. I'm told it's pronounced Sone Cavazos. So Sone Cavazos throws on first down, gets about a yard. It'll be second down nine. Clock running. Just over two minutes remaining. Cavazos under pressure. And the lefty fires it in and out of the hands of Alton Crane. Today's genuine Chevrolet players of the game are Keyshawn Johnson of USC and Marcus Coleman of Texas Tech. In conjunction with the program, Chevrolet will contribute $2,000 to the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators for disbursement to deserving college students so that they may continue their education in honor of Keyshawn Johnson and Marcus Coleman, today's Chevrolet players of the game in the Cotton Bowl. Third down, nine yards to go for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech at their own 32-yard line. Lavender in motion. Cavazos' throw is almost intercepted, intended for Malcolm McKenzie. It was number 22 of USC, Tariel Hopper, who had a chance at the football and couldn't quite hold on. Well, they're going to give Sone a chance at it here on fourth and long. Sone. That's an interesting name. Remember the uh, Washington Huskies? Had a quarterback. Sonny. Sonny Six Killer. Oh, oh Sonny. <laughs> oh, okay. That was Sonny. Fourth down nine for Sonny Cavazos and the Red Raiders. Had a moment of running room, but now he's going to be wrapped up as he gets it across the 35 to 36. George Perry, freshman defensive tackle from San Bernardino, was there for the Trojans. And it'll be SC football at the 36 yard line. This clock just cannot run fast enough for Coach Spike Dykes and his Texas Red Raider staff. New quarterback for SC. Matt Koffler. That's right. Number three QB, Matt Koffler on the game for USC. Thank you, Todd. First down, humble play. No gain. Second down, 10. Those of you who are in Southern California and Texas, we're not shutting you out of the Fiesta Bowl battle between Colorado and Notre Dame. You just wait a little bit longer and go as soon as the clock runs out here and we have a final for you in the Cotton Bowl. On second down, the give is to Jess Holgan, number 47, the number five SC tailback, fifth one to have touched the football, and Holgan was run out of bounds for no gain. It's going to be third down, 11 yards to go. Down 11. Holgan at tailback. Cop 
Butler at quarterback. Red Raiders looking for the run and stopping it at the line of scrimmage. Terry Barnum carried the football. Eric Butler made the stop for Texas Tech. Another Cotton Bowl record. Most total yards offensively for one team. Previous record, Arkansas in 1990. Now, if the quarterback's to kneel down here, technically, if he steps back and kneels down a yard behind the line of scrimmage, then that record would be tied. Southwest Conference's post-involvement in the Cotton Bowl will end with seven consecutive losses by the Southwest Conference representative. A mark of the hard times on which that conference fell in recent years. Holgan with the football on fourth down is stopped short of the first down by Dane Johnson of Texas Tech, so... As the clock runs, the Red Raiders will have one more chance with the ball at their 30-yard line. Mike Garrett on the sideline to congratulate his coach, John Robinson. John says, well, I was reasonably satisfied with the way we played in the first half when we went up 34-0, but... Well, especially in the first quarter, their offense was just an absolute juggernaut. They looked terrific. Throws complete. Nice throw. Down the middle of the field, Scoville. And that'll make a lot of hearts happy in Dallas. Field Scoville, the man whose grandfather was for decades Mr. Cotton Bowl in this town, has a catch that will be remembered in his family for a long, long time. Cavazzo's throwing. Well, Jim, one thing that that does is that the record for the biggest margin That's of right. victory now is no longer. That's right. The Red Raiders avert that particular ignominious fate. Let's look at Cavazos again. Scrambling to the left. Looks a little bit like Jim Del Gazo. Remember the left-hander for the Packers, Jim? Yeah. Wings it. Nice catch there downfield. Cuts back. Gets across. You know, and, and I got to tell you something. Regardless of the outcome of the game, don't tell me that Stacey Mitchell's not going to remember that one. Stacey Mitchell's pretty happy. 5'5", 150-pound freshman out of DeSoto. He's thinking, well, that makes up for my kickoff fumble in the first half that uh, set up a USC touchdown. And now on to add the extra point is John Davis. And with no time on the clock, Davis kicks the extra point. It goes through and makes it 55-14. So a moment of celebration for the Raiders amid this crushing defeat. Again, the final score, Trojans 55, Red Raiders 14. Coming up next, the IBM OS2 Fiesta Bowl with the Colorado Buffaloes battling the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. For Todd Christensen and Bob Golick, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from the Cotton Bowl. I want to thank my statistician, Daryl Jones, spotters Dave Schechter and Jason Arshanoff. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports. Stay tuned for the IBM OS2 Fiesta Bowl. Wednesday, a famous...